WCLU Sports presents Glasgow Scotties Basketball. Oh, I love the school spirit. I love our basketball team. We're going to win. Glasgow Scotties Basketball on WCLU, 103.1 FM and AM 1490. Streaming free at WCLURadio.com and on the Glasgow Scotties and WCLU YouTube channels. Glasgow Scotties Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Basketball is my favorite sport. Going courtside now for your Don Franklin Auto countdown to tip off. Test tonight. It's the Trojanettes and the Scott Lady Scotties. Trojanettes come in at 13 and 4 on the year, 3 and 1 in the district. The Lady Skies are coming in at 3 and 16 on the year and 0 and 4 in the district. Last win for the Lady Skies in this series is in December of 2018. Barron County has won 18 of the last 20, 15 in a row, five in district championship games, and they won all three last year and won the first meeting this year, 47 to 36 at Barron County. We will come back after a four-minute timeout. I will bring in my broadcasting partner, Octavius Barber, for tonight's two contest, and we'll be back for the Don Franklin pregame show on WCLU Sports after a four-minute timeout. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. 
If you already have internet through SCRTC, there's a pretty good chance your speed just went up, maybe even paying less. And if you don't, check on fiber optic with SCRTC in your area because 500 meg is now only 70 bucks. That's 500 down and upload. And if you want more speed, SCRTC got it. Up to 5 gig of it. Make the switch right now at SCRTC.com and we'll do the install free. This won't last forever. With unmatched customer support, SCRTC, your best and last internet provider. Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candied bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Parties, goodness in the making. On WCLU. We will welcome you back into Scotty Gym. It's Chase Landrum alongside my broadcasting partner for the night, Octavius Barber. We are here. You've got the Don Franklin pregame show. We got about 10 minutes before tip here. Let's review what we talked about just before we went to break. Lady Scotty's come in 3 and 16 on the year. The Trojanettes. Come in at 13 and 4 in year, 3 and 1 in the district. The Lady Skies are 0 and 4 in the district. They lost this contest in at Barron County Gym two weeks ago to the night, to be exact, 47 to 36. Barron County has won 18 of the last 20 on the girls' side, five district championship games, and 15 of those in a row. They won all three meetings last year, and the last Scotty win was in December of 2018. Wow, Some incredible stat there, but you know. You know, streaks are meant to be broken, and the, the Lady Scotties have the formula for success tonight. They, uh, I know Coach K has been working with them all week about um, defending, and I know uh, rebounding is going to be a big thing tonight. We've got to keep uh, Abigail Varney off the off the board. She she absolutely killed us when we was over at Barron County. And, um, that's going to be a big part of that. And, you know, she, she, she was able to, to, to guard Addie. And couldn't really, Addy really couldn't break it, and that, that's going to be a big key for us if we can get Addy loose tonight. Yeah, Lady Skies are actually coming off a loss, 56 to 41, against the Lady Raiders on Tuesday night. And in that game, it was a streak of runs. The Lady Skies started out started out hot in the first quarter, then it kind of slowed down. They started turning the ball over a little bit, and nothing could fall in the hoop. So in that last game against Barron County, though, for the Lady Skies, Abby Varney had 23 points and 10 rebounds. Eight of those come on the offensive boards. I think a key for the Lady Scotties tonight is try to keep her off the board as much as possible. Absolutely, and with the emergence of Riley Strode here last couple of games, I think that's going to eliminate a lot of that. She's really came on strong rebounding. I think she had six offensive rebounds in the last game, and that's going to be key for her to, to box him out and keep Barney out of there. Also, for the Lady Scotties, you got to get Kayla Kirkpatrick and Ja'Kali Green going. They were a combined two of 28 that I added up against Warren East on Tuesday night. Kirk, Kirk Patrick was one of 10 from three. You're looking at those two for the Lady Skies tonight to possibly as well get in rhythm tonight as well. Absolutely. Kayla is an excellent three-point shooter. and You know, she loves to stay out there and knock them down. And I think tonight uh, they're going to start falling for her. Ja'Kali can, can knock the three down as well too. Um, but where she gets her points is getting to the rim and getting fouled. And she, she's aggressive down there, and she, but she isn't afraid to step out there and shoot that three. So let's look at the Trojanette stats here while we are. They, they average 56 points a game. They shoot it at 44% from the field. They only shoot the three ball at 30%. They don't take that many threes on the year. They shoot 66% from the line and grab about 29 rebounds. But they get a key player back this week in Katie Murphy who returned from injury on Monday, I heard. So she's going to play, I hear, maybe some spot minutes tonight as well, kind of like she has in the first two games she's been back. She played a couple minutes against Logan County and then played a couple minutes also against Russellville the other night. So she's probably going to come off the bench tonight and play some spot minutes for the Trojanettes. She's going to play some spot minutes for the Tro Trojanettes tonight as well. She didn't play against the Lady Skies the last time they played. Yeah, she's a she's a. Anytime you get that senior leadership back for your team, that always helps, regardless of what she's doing on the court or how long she's on the court. Um, her just her knowledge and you know her presence alone. We got to be wary of where she's at, um, regardless of how long she plays. And um, I know Coach K has talked about that this week about what we need to do to to get ready for her. Also, also tonight, if you're watching from home. You can listen to us on WCLU Radio, or you can listen to us at WCLU.radio slash Scotty, or you can listen to us on the Scotty channel 
as well or watch us on YouTube as we are streaming this ball game. And also tonight, the, the ladies' guys are recognizing the 2014 Class All-A State Championship team that also won the district that year, also won the region that year, and went to the state tournament, that, which was played at Western that year many moons ago. It, it, feels like, it feels like it was yesterday. I, I've heard a lot Ten about years that ago. team. I, I wasn't around at that time, but uh, I've heard a lot about that team, and I, I've been able to talk to some of the girls, and, you know, all I've heard is good things from the players that played and the coaches that coached those games. So congratulations to them. I'm glad to see them back tonight. Yeah, they will be recognized during halftime of the girls' game tonight, and we will have we will show that at halftime as well as they're being recognized. Most of the I hear that most of most of the former players are going to be back tonight, so that's a good that's a good sign as well. Having them come back come back in the Scotty Gym night as well. Yep, it, all, it definitely is. I'd be happy to see Bree Glover and a couple of other. Shalika Smith, Bree Glover, Ellie Bartley, Amanda Lee, yep. Skylar Bird. Heck the list goes on right and there. on. Allie Chapman, yeah. Heidi Holgate, Kaylin Hale. Just goes goes keep on going down the list. It's a heck of a team. So we've got about five minutes for tip here. We're going to continue with our Don Franklin pregame show here. We're going to look back at the Lady Scotties here on, on their season. So Addie Slagle's averaging 12 points a game. She is also grabbing six and a half re eight, excuse me, three and a half rebounds a game. And also, Ja'Kali Green, who's averaging 10 points and three rebounds for the Lady Scotties. Cynthia Austin also averages seven rebounds for the Lady Scotties as well. And she's got to be and all and Cynthia's got to be the one that's going to have to be aggressive tonight. She was really aggressive in that last Barron County game that they played as well. Absolutely, uh, Cynthia is really good in transition. She rebounds and she just she can go coast to coast at any time. Um, she 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 struggles a little bit with her jump shot, but I know she works hard on it every week, just trying to craft it and get it better. She uh, she is a glue for this team, and you know. Um, with the the other guards with her, they'll she'll she'll work hard to, to help the rest of them out. Yeah, and I agree with that. And the last and the last time these two teams played, the Lady Scotties, we talked about, and Joe and I talked in the pregame last time. Get off to a fast start against this team because once you once you can get ahead of them, they have to fight back then, which they're not really accustomed to this year. Lady Scotties jumped out six to zero on them before Barron County first. Got their first bucket of the game with two minutes left in that first quarter. So the defense has got to be there, too, for the ladies' guys. Tonight. And also, Barron County doesn't shoot a lot of threes as a team. They don't. Make, they only make, when I was looking at it here, only four a game. And they base – right, excuse me, that was Glasgow. But Barron only makes 2.7 a game. Nobody – on average, nobody makes a three – a one three-pointer a game. So you're looking to guard them inside more than you are outside because you can let them shoot the three all day long. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we keep talking about Abigail, but, you know, Katie Gerald, she makes her money by those little uh, sideline jump shots. And um, they bring that uh, Hannah Bragg off the bench. And, you know, she, she scores down low too. Um, Abigail doesn't come outside the three-point line much. She, she scores down low. And, that's where Barron does good at. You know, they, they press that one, two, two. They press, they press, they press. And they get steals and they shoot layups off of it. So they don't really need to shoot threes. In the first matchup, though, I was kind of surprised the Trojanettes didn't press that much. So I'm going to go a quick run through here for our sponsors. We got we got our sponsors for the year. Don, Don Franklin, TJ Regional Health, Walbert Trucking. We got Don Franklin, a halftime show. We also got... We also got Walbert Trucking for the fourth quarter. We got the South Central Bank HVAC services with our instant replay. We got the HVAC for our third quarter as well. Elmore Realty and Auction, SCRTC for our free throw line. Don Franklin for our post game. We got our hot, Hardy's hot and fresh play of the game. And we do our Garcia's grill sizzling stats at halftime as well. So we've got about a minute and 50 seconds here before the Trojanettes and the ladies got his tip here. What's our three keys to the game? Uh, three keys to the game. Let's see. Let's let's keep Abigail Varney off the off the boards. Um, let's let them shoot threes, and then uh, we've got to take care of the ball. We we have to move the ball and take care of the ball. I'd say you have to cut cut down the turnovers as well. Turnovers. With that, if you cut down the turnovers and you make free throws and get rebounds, the ladies guys should stay in this ball game like they did the last time. We're going to take a three minute timeout, and we're going to come back for our TJ Regional Health starting lineups after a three-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. 
Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. They're coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. The game of basketball. Glasgow Scottish Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Now back to courtside for the opening tip off. Game time. And you're alongside Octavius Barber. We're going to bring you the TJ Regional Health starting lineup. First, we're going to start with the Trojanettes. Starting at guard is going to be Abigail Varney. She is a senior. Also starting at guard is going to be Caitlin Elmore. She's a junior. Also starting at guard is going to be Katie Gerald. She's a junior. Starting at the last guard is going to be Anna Ashley Atkinson. She's a sophomore. And starting at forward is going to be Junior Taylor Strange. Head coach. For the Trojanettes is Piper Lindsay. They are 13 and four on the year and three and one in the district. Now your starters for the Lady Scotties. We'll start guard eighth grader Eddie Slagle. Also starting guard is going to be fresh and freshman Jakali Green. Also starting guard is going to be freshman Kayla Kirkpatrick. And also starting at forward is going to be junior Cynthia Austin. And also starting forward is going to be freshman Carly Hagen. Head coach for the Lady Skies is Kelsey Kirkpatrick. Her assistant coaches are Nathaniel Goodman, Fred Stockton, and Ellie Bartley. Our three officials for this ball game are Jamie and Bailey, Chris Reeder, and Jeremy Harris. That will conclude our Don Franklin pregame show as well as they're now introducing the Lady Scotty starters in front of a pretty packed house so far. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty packed, packed in here, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ready for some basketball. We got, the, we got the Trojanettes and the Lady Scotty. I think you, I mean tonight you got to keep Barney off the off the off the boards, but you also got to if you're Lady Scotty, you got to shoot the three ball really well as well. Yep, that you control the tempo. You know, Baron County is going to try to try to force you to speed it up with that press. You know, don't get it up the court with your guards and just take your time. All right, we got Jamie and Bailey with the ball. He's going to bring it to the circle for a Wobert trucking tip off. It's Austin and Barney, and the tip is won by the Lady Scotties. 
as it's going to be Green that brings in the front court against this man-to-man -man defense for the Trojanettes. As Green has it up top, she's going to drive inside, spin move. She loses it, but she's going to get it back in the corner. It's going to be out to Slagle. She's being guarded by Var Varney. Over in the corner to Kirkpatrick. She's going to fire up a long three. It's short. Rebound's going to be tipped in the hands of Atkinson for the Trojanettes. She gets it off to Varney. Varney's racing down the floor, down the lane now. Kicks it out in the corner to Elmore. She puts a long jumper. No good. Rebound to Hagen for the Lady Scotties. She gets it off to Green. As Green has it in front for the Lady Scotties. She goes on the right side. Gets off to Slagle. Slagle's going to drive baseline. She's cut off by Varney. She's going to bring it back out. She loses it. It's going to be out to Green up top. Green's going to drive now inside. She decides to bring it back out. It's going to be a cross court pass to Slagle. Addy has it out front. She's going to hand it off to Green up front. They're going to reset the offense here. Green's got it in the circle. She's being guarded by Atkinson. Gets a screen from Hagen. Green drives down the lane, and they're going to get her for a traveling violation. She's got to use that screen right there and get to the rim. <clears throat> it's going to be Trojanette's basketball. It's going to be Elmore to bring it up for the Trojanette. She's being guarded by Green. Lady Scotty's open up in a man-to-man. -man. It's going to be over to Atkinson on the right side. She's being guarded by Slay. Gets a screen there by Strange. They got it inside by Strange, and she is going to be called for a foul. That's going to go on Carly Hagen. That's her first. That's the team first as well. That's going to send Taylor Strange to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot too. Strange's first attempt is good. That puts the Trojanettes on the board first at 1-0. to zero. Strange's second attempt now is no good. Rebound goes to Hagen. It's quickly off in the hand of Slagle. She brings it in the front court, gets it off to Austin. Austin drives baseline now, and she's going to go. Nice spin, spin move. Puts it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. Ladies, guys, take a 2-1 to one lead. A spin move by Cynthia Austin getting to the rim. It's going to be Elmore bring it up for the Trojanettes. She's being guarded by Green. She hands it off to the elbow to Strange. It's going to be a jump ball on the floor here. It's going to stay with the Trojanettes. As that pass there by Elmore couldn't get to Strange. It's going to be Varney throwed in underneath for the Trojanettes. She gets it in to Gerald. It's going to be, it's going to be a steal for Kayla Kirkpatrick. As Elmore's pass was stolen, Kirkpatrick brings it up, gets it off the green. Green's going to go to the rim now and miss the layup. Rebound goes to Atkinson for the Trojanettes. As Atkinson gets it in the front court, it's off in the hands of Gerald. She drives it inside, gets it to Strange. Strange saves it inbounds. Strange saves it to, to Elmore. It's, it's going to be a steal for the Lady Scotties. It's off in the hands of Kirkpatrick. She's pushing the pace up the court. She's got it. She's going to drive down the lane now. She's cut off. It's going to be a scrum on the floor for the ball. Kirkpatrick has it. And Coach Kirkpatrick's going to get a timeout here to save the possession. It's a 2-1 Lady Scotty lead. 540 left in the first quarter. We're going to take a 30-second timeout and come back on WCOU Sports. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. WCLU. We're back in Scotty Gym. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Bar Barber. The ladies, Scotty's lead two to one. 540 left in the first quarter. As the ladies, Scotty's had the ball, it's off in the hands of Kirk Patrick now. It's in the corner to Slagle. Slagle has it. She gets it to the elbow to Austin. Back out to Slagle. Over to Kirk Patrick. Over to Green. Green's looking to drive. She decides to pull up for a three now. It's no good. Long rebound's going to go out of bounds off the ladies, Scotty. It's going to be Trojanette's basketball, trailing two to one. Good, good shot by Jakali. It just didn't fall. It's going to be Elmore to bring it up for the Trojanettes. Lady Scotty still in a man to man. It's going to be off to Varney on the right side. Kirk Patrick's guarding her. It's going to be inside there to Atkinson. She missed the shot, and it goes out of bounds off the Lady Scotty. It's going to be Trojanette's ball underneath. It's going to be Atkinson to throw it in this time. 
Atkinson's looking to get it in. She can't get it in. She's still looking again. Gets it in up top to Gerald. Gerald's drove down the baseline, get it off to Strange. She puts up a short jumper that's good. She's got the first three for the Trojanettes as the, as the Trojans, or Trojanettes bring pressure now. It's off to Slagle. She crossed the timeline against four Trojanette defenders, and it's going to be a steal for Strange. It's going to be in the hands of Elmore. She, she's got, excuse me, it was Gerald in the front court with it now. Gets it off to Elmore at top. It's going to be a drive there by Varney. She kicks it out to Strange. It's in the corner to Varney. Varney drives baseline now. She goes up with a short jumper that's good. Gives the Trojanette a 5-2 to two lead as they bring pressure again. It's in the hands of Kirk Patrick. She gets it in the middle to Austin. Austin turns to three Trojanette players. It's in the hands of Austin, and they're going to get a foul here on the Trojanettes. That foul goes on Katie Elmore. That's her first team first of the quarter. Scotty's handling the pressure pretty well so far, Chase. It's not. It's going to come into green here. 420 left in this first quarter. And she's going to get off the Slagle on the right side. Gets it into Austin. Austin's going to go to the rim. She's cut off there by Gerald. Austin missed the shot. Rebound goes in the hands of Elmore. Elmore quickly comes up the floor, being guarded by Kirk Patrick. She's going to go to the rim now. She kicks it outside to Atkinson. It's now in the hands of Strange, being guarded by Hagen. It's going to be over on the left side for a Gerald's three now. It's no good. Long rebound's going to be tipped out of bounds by the Trojanettes, so it's going to go to the Lady Scotties. It's a 5 2 Trojanettes lead, as it's going to be to Slagle here. It's going to be a steal for the Trojanettes, as it's in the hands of Gerald. They get it off to Elmore. Elmore kicks it out to Atkinson. She fires up a three. It's no good. Long rebound goes in the hands of Gerald, and she is fouled. That foul goes on Chicago Green. That's her first, team second of the quarter. That's it's going to be Katie Gerald's go to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot two. Refs letting them play a little bit. There was a couple reaches in there that I thought they should have called. Letting them play tonight. It's Gerald's first free throw is good. It's Jordy Goodman check in for the ladies' guys. She replaces Addie Slagle. Gerald's second attempt is no good. Rebound goes to Austin for the ladies' guys. She just takes it up the court for the ladies' guys. It's going to be out to Kirk Patrick. Kirk Patrick's looking. She's going to hand it off to Green. 3.28 left in the first quarter. It's a 6-2 lead for the Trojanettes. As Green's got it in the circle. She loses it, gets it back. It's going to be in the corner to Kirk Patrick now. She's going to drive baseline now, but she is cut off out to Goodman. Back to Green. Green's got it up top. As the Trojanettes' defense so far has been the story of this game. Yeah, they're eliminating the guard play. That's what they need to do. Goodman has it on the right side. Bounce pass to Kirk Patrick up top. She wanted to get the three off, but she couldn't. It's over to Austin. Austin's going to pull up for a three now. That's no good. Rebound goes to Atkinson for the Trojanettes. She gets it off to Elmore. Elmore kicks it off in the corner to Gerald. She drives down the lane. Shot is no good, and they're going to get a, fat, a jump ball here between Varney. It looked like Kayla Kirkpatrick. It's going to go to the Lady Scotties as Slagle comes to check back in. She replaces Kayla Kirkpatrick. Also, Atkinson goes to sit for the Trojanettes, and here we see Katie Murphy. Let's see what she does right here, see how we try to, try to the guard The Trojanettes her. bring a 2-2-1 pressure. It's off to Slagle. It's over to Goodman. Lady Scotty's got to beat the pressure, get across half court. They do. Green beats the pressure. It's in the corner. She is trapped by Murphy and Barney, and they're going to get a quick foul here. That foul goes on Abby Barney. That's her first team second of the quarter. As Riley Strode comes to the scorer's table now to check in, she is going to replace Carly Hagan. It's a good move by Coach K putting her in at that time. Barney she just picked up one. She's so. gave uh, – very valuable minutes for the Lady Scotties lately yes. as well. I would say if you're the Lady Scotties, you're going to go, you're going to take a possession at Barney right here. Absolutely. As it comes in the strokes, out to Green. Ball is tipped there by Elmore. It's going to be out to Slagle. Slagle gets it over to Green. It's over to Goodman now in the corner, back to Green. Back to Goodman. Goodman's being guarded by Murphy. It's out to Slagle. Slagle's being guarded by Varney. It's back to Jordy Goodman on the right side. Goodman's going to drive now. She's trying to put a spin move on Murphy. Does not, and Murphy steals it from her. It's going to be in the hands of Barney. She's going to drive down the lane now, and she loses it. It goes in the hands of Strange. Now she loses it over to Elmore. It's over to Varney on the right side. She's going to pull it for about an eight-footer. It's an air ball. Rebound. It's saved inbounds to Murphy. It's back to Varney. Varney's going to go down the lane. Her shot's no good, but she is fouled. 
Foul goes on Jordy Goodman. That's her first team, third of the quarter. Got a rebound right there. Sends Abby Varney to the SCRTC free line where she is going to shoot two. Her first free throw is good. Kayla Kirkpatrick checks back in. She replaces Jordy Goodman. It's a 7-2 lead for the Trojanettes as Varney's got one more. Her free throw is up. It is good. It's an 8-2 lead for the Trojanettes as it comes into Green. Green gets it back to Kirkpatrick. Shelby Bird also checked in for the Trojanettes as it's quickly up Slagle. Inside the stroke, she goes up with his block, but she has fouled. That foul will go on Katie Gerald. That's her first, team's third of the quarter. That's going to send Riley Strode to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot two. Way to beat the press there by the ladies' college, pushing the ball up the court. Strode's free throw is good. It's an eight to three lead for the Trojanettes. There's 143 left in this first quarter. Strode's second free throw is good as well. She goes two of two at the line. Lady Sky is back within four, eight to four. As Murphy brings it up for the Trojanettes now, being guarded by Slagle. She gets it off to Bird on the right side. Bird's being guarded by Green. It's back out top in the hand of Gerald's over to Murphy. Murphy gets it back to Gerald's. Gerald's gets it to Varney. She's being guarded by Green. Back out to Bird. Bird's looking, gets it over to Strange. Strange is looking, tries to get inside the bird, but it's going to be tapped out of bounds by the lady. Scotty's there as Kirk Patrick tried to save it. 1-14 left on the clock in the opening quarter. It's going to be Murphy to throw it in for the Trojanettes. She's looking to get it in. She can't get in. Finally gets it in to Barney. She goes up with it and puts it in. That's a South Central bank shot. She's got six in this opening quarter. It's a 10-4 lead for the Trojanettes. As it's over the green, back to Slagle, over to Kirk Patrick. Back to Slagle. She crossed the timeline over to Green. It's inside to Strode. Strode's got it. She puts a spin move on it. Goes up. Her shot is good. That's a South Central bank shot. Great it's a move 10 by Riley Strode. For the, for the Trojanettes. Good move there by Strode. She's got four points early on as Varney's got it guarded by Kirk Patrick. It's going to be tipped in the hands of Bird. It's a steal by Kayla Kirk Patrick. They get it ahead to Green. Green gets it back tapped there by Murphy in the hands of Varney, and she is fouled. Five turnovers by the Lady Scotties. We talked about trying to eliminate the turnovers in this game. That foul goes on Addie Slagle. That's her first team fourth as Jordy Goodman checks back in to replace Jacali Green. Sydney Kleikendall also checks in for the Lady Scotties. She replaces Addie Slagle. It's a 10 6 lead for the Trojans. 40 seconds left in the quarter as Murphy brings it into the front court for the Trojanettes, being guarded by Kleikendall. It's over to Bird. She gets a screen there. By Hannah Bragg, who just checked into the ball game for the Trojanettes as well. Varney has it for the Trojanettes. She's being guarded by Kirk Patrick. She drives down inside, goes with a shot. It's no good, but she is fouled. That foul goes on Riley Strode. That's her first team's fifth of the quarter. Riley's hands are straight up. I don't know what else she could have done in, in that. That sends Abby Varney back to the SCRTC free climb where she's going to shoot two. Her first attempt is good. Slagle checks back in for the Lace guys. She replaces Kleikendall. Also, Green's going to check back in. She is going to replace Jordy Goodman. That is the seventh point for Abby Varney out of the first 11. She's looking to pick up point number eight here. Her free throw is up, and it is good. It's a 12-6 lead for the Trojanettes. 20 seconds left in the quarter. As Slagle's got it in the front court, Lady Sky's looking for one. Slagle has it with 13 over to Green. Green's got it. She's going to have it outside. She brings it back to the circle, gets it back to Slagle with eight. Slagle has it. She gets it tipped by Varney. Five seconds to go. She's got it. She gets it inside the throw, but it's going to be stolen by Bragg. And there's going to be – that's going to be the end of the first quarter. It's a 12-6 lead for the Trojanettes. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCOU Sports. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. WCLU. 
We're back in Scotty Jim. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. We've got an HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Riley Strode turnaround in the post here. Shot that got the Lady Scotties back within a few points. It's 12 to 6 after one quarter play. Here it is now. Riley Strode spin move in the lane. It gets the Lady Scotties back within 12 to 6 here after one quarter of play as Varney has eight of the 12 Trojanette points. We got to keep her from scoring and we got to keep her from getting the ball. She seems to be able to get open and, you know, she's scoring right around the rim. That's the Lady Scotties picked up five fouls in that opening quarter as well. None, nobody has more than one, though. It's going to be Trojanette's ball to open up this quarter. As it's going to be Slagle, Green, Kirkpatrick, Hagen, and Austin to open up this quarter for the Lady Scotties. It's going to be Atkinson, Elmore, Bragg, Varney, and Bird for the Trojanettes. As Bird's got it in the corner, it's going to be at the elbow to Bragg. She puts up a free throw line jump shot that bounces around and off. Rebound goes to Green. Varney comes up behind Green, but she doesn't get the back tap as Green's going to bring it to the front court for the Lady Scotties. Gets it off to Austin. Austin's going to drive down baseline. She tried to spin move. She gets it back, gets it off to Slagle. It's back out top to Kirkpatrick. She did not attempt a shot in the first quarter. Kirkpatrick's looking. She brings it back out the circle, gets it off to Green. Green's being guarded by Elmore. Green's looking to drive. She's cut off now. She picked up her dribble, gets it off to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick drives inside. She has nowhere to go, so it's, it gets in the hands of Hagen, and it's going to be a steal by Shelby Bird. It's in the hands of Varney now. Varney's bringing it up in the front court. Varney gets it over to Bird. It's over to Atkinson. She's going to fire up a three now. That's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Cynthia Austin for the ladies. Guys, kicks it out to Hagen. Hagen's got it in the front court. She's going to drive inside, and she is going to be fouled by Shelby Bird. That's going to be her first team's first of the quarter. It's a 12-6 lead for the Trojan Nets as we open up play in this second quarter. It's going to be Kirkpatrick throwing it in underneath. Gets it into Austin. It's going to be back out to Green. It's over to Slagle. It's going to be tried to get inside to Austin, but it's tipped there by Atkinson. It's a steal from the Trojanettes. Quickly ahead to Varney in the corner. She's being guarded by Kirkpatrick. Down to Bird. She drives down the lane now. She puts up a, a floater. It's no good. Saved in bounds by Kirkpatrick in the hands of Slagle. Slagle brings it to the front court. She drives down the middle of the lane now. She goes up with the jump shot. It's no good. Rebound goes to Hagen, and she is fouled. That foul goes on Hannah Bragg. That's her first team second of the quarter. That sends Carly Hagen to the SCRTC free throw line where she's going to shoot two. Hagen's free throw attempt is no good. It's Riley Wilson to check in for the Trojanette. She replaces Hannah Bragg. As Hagen's second attempt at the free throw line is good. She goes one of two at the line as Goodman checks back in for the ladies. Guys, she replaces Kayla Kirkpatrick. It's a 12, get a stop right yeah, here, Chase. 12 7 lead for the Trojanettes. Ladies, guys, looking to get a stop on defense. As it's going to be Elmore to bring it to the front court for the Trojanettes. Gets it off to Wilson. Wilson's being guarded by Hagen out to Atkinson up top. Atkinson has it, picks up her dribble. Looking for somebody to get it to. Gets it off to Varney, being guarded by Slagle on the left side. Varney's going to drive baseline now. And it's stolen by Slagle. Slagle's going to go bring it to the other end. She's going to drive down inside, and she gets it blocked by Bird. It's in the hands of Varney. Varney quickly the other way now. Varney's going to drive down the lane. She's going to stop, and they're going to get her for a traveling violation. As she thought about going up with a shot and then passing it. It's five turnovers by the lady. Coach the Piper Lindsay is going to take a timeout here. We're going to take a quick 30-second timeout and come back on WCLU Sports. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise. And that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. WCLU. We're back in Scotty Jim. It's Chase Lander alongside Octavius Barber. 
as it's a 12-7 lead for the Trojanettes. One, two, one, one press. It's a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press for the Trojanettes as Goodman is going to inbound the ball for the Lady Scotties. And it's going to come into green as the Trojanettes look to trap off to Austin. Lady Scotties going to break the pressure as Austin looking, probably going to drive the rim. She kicks out to Slagle. Slagle's wide open for a three, puts it up, and it's good. That's an Elmer Realty auction three-point shot. Brings the Lady Scotties back within two. Transition offense is always great offense. Addie hits that big three. Big time shot there by Slagle, her first point tonight. It's 12 to 10, Trojanettes as Varney's got it. She's going to drive inside. She's met by Hagen, kicked out to Wilson, back to Bird, and they're going to get Jordy Goodman with the foul here. That's going to be her second and team's first of the quarter. It's going to be Jordy's second, team's first of the quarter as Kirkpatrick checks back in. She's going to replace Jordy Goodman. It's going to be Varney to inbound the ball right in front of us here. She's going to get it into Elmore, being guarded by Green. Over to Atkinson. Varney's looking to get open inside. She's going to get it down on the baseline. She's being guarded by Hagen. Varney's looking here. They're, she gets it back out to Atkinson. Atkinson has it up top for the Trojanettes. It's in the corner to Varney. Varney's looking to try to get it inside. It's off to Wilson up top. Now they try to get it inside there to Elmore, and she throws it out of bounds. It's going to be Lady Scotty basketball. Six turnovers by the Trojanettes. And this is kind of the game that Coach Kirkpatrick, I believe, wanted to play in the first place. It comes into Austin. Austin get, tried to get off Kirkpatrick, but it's going to be a steal back. It's, it's going to be over to Bird. She puts it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. That's the one thing you can't do if you're the Lady Scotty. Turn nope. the ball over in the backcourt. As Kirkpatrick is trapped over Goodman, it's quickly to Green. Now they're going to break the press easily again. As Green's going to drive down the lane, she gets it off to Hagen. She goes up with it, and it's good. That's a South Central bank shot. Wade Carly run the floor. Jacali sees a good layup. It's a 14 12 lead for the Trojanettes as it's Elmore in the front court. She uses a screen there by Varney. It's going to be tipped out of bounds off the Lady Scotty. It went off Kirkpatrick's hands as Addison Norris is going to check in for the Lady Scotties. She is going to replace Carly Hagen. Also, it's going to be Gerald's to replace Riley Wilson for the Trojanettes. As Bird's going to throw it in for the Trojanettes. Bird gets it into Varney. Varney's got it guarded by Kirkpatrick. She gets a screen from Elmore. Green picks up Varney. It's going to be over to Gerald's. Gerald's drives baseline now. She's met by, by Kayla Kirkpatrick, and they're going to get a foul on K Kayla. That's going to be only her first, team second of the quarter. That's going to send Katie Gerald's to the SCRTC free throw line where she's going to shoot two. Her free throw attempt is no good. As Katie Murphy comes to the scorer's table for the Trojanettes, she is going to replace Abby Varney. So this is a pivotal time for the Lady Scotties with Varney going to the bench for the Trojanettes. we got to recognize that and attack it. You got to try to take advantage of Definitely her time do. on the bench. As Gerald's free throws in and out, rebound goes to Austin. Quickly to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick quickly gets to Green. Green's got it up top. Lady Scotties have a chance to take the lead on this possession. As Green's picked up by Elmore. Green's looking to drive. She will drive now. She goes down inside, puts up a shot that's no good. Rebound goes to Atkinson for the Trojanettes. Gets it off to Elmore. Elmore's looking to drive. She will drive down the lane now. She goes up with a shot that's no good. Rebound goes to Austin. Off to Kirkpatrick now. Just over halfway through the second quarter, Kirkpatrick crosses the timeline. 350 left in the second quarter. It's over to Austin, just outside the three-point line. Austin's looking, gets it over to Green. Yeah, get some movement. Not, not much movement on offense on this possession. It's over to Goodman. Goodman gets it back to Green up top. Green's going to come set something up. She's being guarded by Elmore. Green gets it off to Goodman. And they're going to get a foul. They're going to get a foul off the ball here on Shelby Bird. That is her second team's third of the quarter. It's completely opposite from the beginning of the game. They wasn't calling anything. Now they're kind of calling it a little that tight. That quickly gets Abby Varney back into the game to replace Bird as well. As the ball comes into Green, over to Goodman. Goodman gets it back to Green. As the Trojanettes are still in a man's man to man defense. Green's being guarded by Elmore. Now she gets a screen. Green's going to drive down the lane, kicks it off to Goodman, and it goes right through her hands out of bounds. Takali, I think, should have took that layup. It was wide open. Goodman had it open shot in the corner, but it went right through her hands as Slagle checks back in for Addison Norris for the ladies, guys. It's a 14 12 lead for the Trojanettes, who only have two points in this quarter. Not a bad quarter for the Lady Scotties. As Varney's going to bring the ball up for the Trojanettes, now being guarded by Kirkpatrick. Gets it over to Murphy. 
Murphy being guarded by Slagle. She picks up her dribble, gets it inside, and it's now inside to Atkinson. She gives up a shot that's good. That's a South Central bank shot. 16-12 lead for the Trojans. As Slagle dribbles the free throw line, and they're going to get her for a traveling violation. It's 11 turnovers by the Lady Scotties. 11 turnovers by the Lady Scotties, two to five. Six turnovers for the Trojanettes. 16-12 lead for the Trojanettes. That's it's going to be Elmore to bring it into the front court this time for the Trojanettes. Elmore's being guarded by Green. Gets it over here to Gerald. Gerald's being guarded by Goodman. Gets it off to Murphy. Murphy's going to drive down the lane. Kicks it out to Elmore. Elmore's going to drive on Green. She goes up with a shot that's good, but they're going to get her for a charge. That foul goes on Elmore. That's her second team's fourth of the quarter. As Strode checks back in for the Lays, guys, she's going to get Cynthia Austin a break. Kayla does that better than anybody else I know, taking that charge. I thought that was Addie that took the charge right Addie. there. My bad, I'm sorry. It was Addie. Good charge. As Green, it's Green, Kirkpatrick, Slagle, Strode, and Goodman for the ladies, guys. As Green has it in the front court, a 16-12 lead for the Trojanettes. As it's over to Slagle being guarded by Varney. As Slagle now is fight, trying to fight off Varney, she's going to pull up for a three now. That's no good. Rebound's going to go with a Strode, and they're going to get a foul for her pushing off. That's going to be Strode's second now, team's third of the quarter. As it's Hagen and Norris to check in for the ladies, guys. They're going to replace Goodman and Strode, who just picked up her second foul with 2.05 left in the quarter. We're hanging with them. We're playing really good defense. Let's continue to do it through the second I quarter. I think this is going to be a game where you're just going to have to be patient yep. and wait and just hang around the whole game. Don't let them rush you. As Atkinson this time brings it up for the Trojanettes. And Kayla Kirkpatrick steals it. She read the eyes of Atkinson. She's going to go the rim now, and she is going to be fouled. Way to read the pass, Kayla Kirkpatrick. Get that's to the rim, take the foul. Foul goes on Atkinson. That's her first team's fifth of the quarter. That sends Kayla Kirkpatrick to the SCRTC free line where she is going to shoot two with 152 left in the quarter. Kirkpatrick's free throw attempt is good. As we as in the first contest, the Lady Scotties have hung around here again tonight. It's a 16-13 Trojanette lead. As Kirkpatrick's second free throw attempt now is short. Rebounds tipped in the hands of Murphy. She brings it across the timeline. She's going to drive down the lane. Gets it inside to Atkinson, and her shot is blocked, but she is going to be fouled. That foul goes on Addison Norris. That's going to be her first. Team's fourth of the quarter. It's going to be Ann Ashley Atkinson to shoot two at the SCRTC free throw line. Her first attempt is good. That is where Murphy's ability to see people open right there. She, is, she sees the she floor, sees very, the floor well. very well. She does. As Atkinson's second attempt now is no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Atkinson, and she misses the putback. Rebound went to Carly Hagen for the Lady Scotties. It's a 17-13 lead for the Trojanettes. 90 seconds left here till halftime. As Green's got it up top for the Lady Scotties. Trying to slow the pace down a little bit here. Green has it on the right side. She now drives on Atkinson. She pushes off. She goes up a shot. No call down inside. It's going to go out of bounds off the Lady Scotties. No call by either ref. They looked at each other and they just didn't call it anything. Wow. It's going to be Murphy to bring it up for the Trojan net. So she's going to be picked up by Slagle. She picks up her dribble. She tried to get it inside there to Varney, and she stepped on the baseline. That's going to be a turnover for the Trojanettes. Number eight on the night with one minute left in the second quarter. Lady Scotty's still hanging around. Need a bucket Need on a, this possession. Yep. As it's just under a minute now to go. It's green. It's a man-to-man -man defense for the Trojanettes. They have not switched this whole game. As green gets it over to Kirkpatrick, she's being guarded by Murphy. Kirkpatrick's looking to drive. She will now. Gets it off to Slagle. She's going to pull up for a long jumper. That's good. Just inside the three-point line. It's a 17-15 game. As it's going to be a tip pass in the hands of Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick's got it over to Green. Green is trapped, but she's going to bring it back out. It's over to Norris. It's going to be over to Slagle. Addy's going to pull up for a long three now. No good. Long rebound goes to Slagle, though. It's going to be inside to Kirkpatrick. With 20 seconds to go, she loses it in the lane. And there's going to be a jump ball here. It's going to stay with the Lady Scotties. 
as Austin's going to check back into the game. She's going to replace Hagen. Did they count that last shot as a three on the board? It looks like they did, but I believe it's just a two. It was a two. It was 17 to 13, but they got 17 to 16 on the board. As it comes into Slagle, it's going to be inside to Austin. Austin's got it on the baseline. She kicks it back at Slagle. She's wide open, pulls up for a three. It's short. Rebound goes in the hands of Gerald as she is trapped by Norris. It's over to Atkinson. Atkinson's going to bring it up with six. She's going to cross the timeline with four. It's going to be in the corner of Strange for a jump shot. No good. Rebound goes to Slagle. That's going to be the score at halftime. Lady Scotty's hanging around here at the half. It's 17 to 15. We are going to we're going to stay right here, I believe, for a little bit as the 2014 as the 2014 All A State Championship team for the Lady Scotties will be coming out here during halftime. Good first half though by the Lady Scotties there. I, I felt like they controlled that first half, even though they're they're down by two. They didn't try to play in the Barron County's hands. Didn't push the pace as much. Um, a big thing we got to get back on defense, especially when uh, when Katie comes in because she she sees the floor very well. She passes very well. Yeah, and, and, and the Trojanettes only scored five points that quarter. As we, I've got a girls' halftime score in other district action. It's Warren East 39, Allen County 29 at halftime tonight in that other district contest. Warren East defeated the Lady Scotties 56 to 41. We'll come back. I tell you what, we're going to come back after a 30 second timeout. We will show you, the, show you this 2014 LA State team after a 30 second timeout on WCLU Sports. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. WCLU. We're back here at Scotty Gym. It's Chase Lander alongside Octavius Barber. This is the Don Franklin Halftime Show. But we got the 2014 All-A State Championship team. They also won the district in that year. They also won the region tournament. They also went to the state tournament. We've got Coach Eaton, Coach Freeman, Emily Alexander-Ross now, Kaylin Hale, Amanda Lee, Skylar Bird, Heidi Holgate, Shalika Smith, Heidi Adept, Bree Glover, Allie Chapman, Ashley Smith, Player Ellie Bartley, also now assistant coach for the ladies' guys, Fred Stockton, and head coach at that time, Justin Stinson. Looks like a great group of, of kids. Great there. group. And they come back here tonight as the 2012 team was recognized, I believe, two years ago as well. They are now recognizing all the people, people that were on that team. As our bookkeeper, Carl Napier, was also with them during that trip as well as three of these players went to play D1 basketball as well. Bree Glover first went to Ole Miss. Shalika had a chance to play at Western Kentucky, and Ellie Bartley went to play at Northern North Florida back in 2017. Shalika graduated in 2014, I believe it was. Yeah. Bree graduated, I believe, in 2015. She wound up playing a lot of ball. I think she, she, she played, played a little bit at Ole Miss. A little bit at Ole Miss, a little bit at Western. Yeah. Then ended up playing a little Lindsay, I believe, as well later on. So we're, as Matthew's adding up these halftime stats, we will go ahead and take our five-minute break here, and we'll come back with our Don Franklin halftime show after a five-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 
With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. Want to slash your cable bill? Save over $20 a month with MyStream TV from SCRTC, the savings alternative with the same great channel lineup you've always been accustomed to. Packages as low as $85 even include internet, at least 200 meg. This is a no-brainer. No more cable boxes, just an app. And you even get an extra stream. Wait till we show you catch-up TV. Compare your current service to the new MyStream TV from SCRTC, 678-2111. Call and save today. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candied bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Hardy's, goodness in the making. Glasgow Scotty's Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Go at him! Go at him! It's time for the Don Franklin Auto Halftime Report. We're back here in Scotty Gym. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. We've got a HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Cynthia Austin pass back to Addie Slagle. That's going to give the Lady Scotties a one point, two point deficit here at the half at 17 to 15. As we've got the Don Franklin halftime show for you. As Octavius and I will look over the halftime stats. We'll let 
Mr. Barber here. Look at the team halftime stats as I look through the individual halftime stats for you here. We'll, we'll turn it over here to Mr. Barber and let him do it. Great first half by the Lady Scotties. I felt like they, they fought to, to stay with them and, you know, play great defense. Um, first off for the, the Trojanettes, we are – they are four for 16 for two. They are zero from three – zero for three for three. Eight rebounds, nine turnovers. They are seven for 12 for free throw line. They kind of doubled up on us. They got six fouls. And for the Lady Scotties, we are shooting five for 16 from the, from the two, one for seven from the three-point line. They have a total of eight rebounds, 11 turnovers. They have four for six from the free throw line, and they have a total of nine fouls. Altogether, it's 17 Barron County, 15 Glasgow. Well, and as we talked about in the pregame is where the ladies guys need to make a bunch of threes tonight as well to probably maybe stay in this ball game. They're, they're only one of seven for three, and they're in this ball game. They're I mean. playing great defense. You know, the Barron County moves around a lot, and uh, we're able to react to it. They're, they're just with they're, – they're finding Varney anytime she moves around. As in other girls' basketball, Warren Central leads Greenwood at the half, 29 to 17. I've got the player stats here for the Trojanette. We're gonna start. We're gonna start with Abby Varney. She is two of three from the field. She is four of four from the free throw line. She has eight points for the ball game. Also, Caitlin Katie Elmore did not score in the first half. She had one rebound, 0 of one from the field. Taylor Strange was. One of two from the field, one of two at the free throw line. She has three points. Also, Katie Geralds is one of four at the free throw line. And she is 0 of two from the field. She has two rebounds. And Ashley Atkinson has three points on one of five shooting, 0 of two from the three, one of two at the line. She has four rebounds, one offensive board. Shelby Bird is one of two from the field for two points, no rebounds. Hannah Bragg is also 0 of 1 from the field, and Katie Murphy got a rebound in the first half for their team total of 17 at the half. For your Lady Scotties, it's going to be Addie Slagle to start with here. She is 2 of 5 from the field, 1 of 4 for 3, got one rebound for five points. Ja'Kali Green is 0 of 3 from the field, 0 of 1 from the three, and one rebound. Cynthia Austin is 1 of 3 from the field, 0 of 1 from the three. She also has three rebounds. She has two points. Kayla Kirkpatrick is 0 of 1 from the field. That was a three-point attempt, 1 of 2 at the line for one point. Carly Hagen is 1 of 1 from the field, 1 of 2 from the free throw line, three rebounds, one offensive board. Jordy Goodman played but did not score. Riley Strode was 1 of 2 from the field, 2 of 2 at the free throw line for her four points. That's a team total of 15 here in the first half. The Lady Scotties had eight rebounds in the first half, two offensive boards. The Trojanettes also had eight rebounds in the first half and one offensive board. We've got about a minute and 30 seconds here before the HVAC third quarter. That halftime show was brought to you by Don Franklin, and our stats were also brought to you by Garcia's Grill Sizzling Stats. We're going to take a 30-second timeout, and we'll be back to bring you the HVAC, sir, HVAC third quarter after a 30-second timeout in WCLU Sports. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. WCLU. We're back here in Scotty Gym. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barr. We got 30 seconds before the HVAC third quarter. Lady Scotty's trail by two at the half, 17 to 15. It, and the Trojanettes are led by Abby Varney. She's got eight of the 17 points as we talked about in the opening. She has no rebounds so far. Right, it's good, keeping her off the board. She had 10 good. last time yeah. when these two met. It's going to be Trojanette's basketball here to open up the HVAC third quarter. I think this is a big possession here for the Lady Scotties here to open up the half, try to get a stop on defense. I think it's going to dictate the rest of this game. Absolutely. I'm looking for uh, Coach K to draw up something nice coming out of this second half. To get a point As to we got a score. really good crowd on hand tonight. Every, people have filed in. We got a good good crowd here to begin this second half of this ball game, and it's going to be Trojanettes basketball. It's going to be the same five starters for the Trojanettes and the Scotties. 
to start this HVAC third quarter. 17-15 lead for the Trojanettes. And it's going to be Atkinson to go throw it in. She gets it off to Elmore, and we're off. As Elmore brings it to the front court, gets it off the hands to Varney, guarded by Kirk Patrick. Varney gets a screen from Strange. Varney's going to drive down the lane. She has met there, Boston. Her shot's no good, but there's a foul. And I am not sure where the foul was right there because Cynthia was standing straight up. It's going to be her first team, first of the half. It's going to send Abby Varney to the SCRTC free climb where she is going to shoot two. Abby is four for four on the night. Her first free throw attempt was no good. That makes that jinx right there. It's four for five now. The announcer's jinx, as Joe would say. <laughs> I've heard him say it before. <laughs> Varney's second attempt now is good. She goes one of two at the line. Trojanettes lead 18 to 15. As the Trojanettes will not press after that made free throw. It's going to be Slagle to bring it up for the Lady Scotty. She's got it being guarded by Varney. Gets it off to Austin at the elbow. Austin turns. She's looking. She is trapped now, but gets it back off in the hands of Kirkpatrick. She falls down and turns it over in the hands of Elmore. Got away Elmore's going to go the other way now. She gets it off to Atkinson. It's going to be a three-point attempt by Gerald. It's no good. Rebound goes to Hagen for the Lady Scotty. It's in the hands of Green. Green dribbles around Elmore. She is met by Varney, and they're going to get Green for a charge. It's going to be her second team, second of the quarter. At the Trojanettes lead 18 to 15. It's going to be Atkinson to throw it in for the Trojanettes. As it's going to be Goodman to check in for the ladies' guys. She is going to replace Kayla Kirkpatrick. As it's in the Elmore. Elmore's guarded by Green. It's going to be a steal by Slagle, though. Elmore's pass is tipped over to Green. Back to Slagle. She's going to go up with it and lay it in. That's a South Central bank shot. Nice pass in there between Ja'Kali Green and Addie Slagle. What a steal by Addie Slagle. Slagle, she went up with one hand and grabbed it out the air. It's an 18-17 game, and it's over to Atkinson in the corner. She gets a screen from, from Gerald. She's looking. It's going to be another steal by Slagle. Almost, but it's going to be an over and back call, and it's going to go to the Lady Scotty. As, it, as she stepped on the midcourt line and touched it first. That all started with Addie being aggressive on, Var on Varney, making it turn the ball over. Lady Scotties have a chance here on this possession to take their first lead since early in the ball game at 2-1 to one, as Green's got it in the front court. She's looking. She gets it off to Slagle. Slagle's looking now. She's being guarded by Varney. Off to Austin. Austin's got it. She's going to hand it back to Slagle in the circle. It's going to set the offense for the Lady Scotties. And she's going to get a screen from Varney. Slagle's three attempt is blocked by Varney, and it's going to be knocked out of her hands, but she is going to be fouled. Foul goes on Slagle. That is her second team, third of the quarter. 90 seconds into this third quarter, and the ladies' guy's got three team fouls already. As they have 12 for the game to the Trojanettes, six. As Varney's going to bring it up for the Trojanettes. If Slagle's going to play defense on the three line, Varney might have traveled with it, got away with it. She turned around one to shoot it. She gets it off to Gerald. Gerald has now gets it back to Varney. Varney's going to drive down the lane now. She's met by Hagen. Her shot's no good. Rebound's going to be tipped out of bounds off of the Lady Scotties. It's going to be Trojanette's ball underneath. It's going to be Elmore to throw it in. Elmore's looking to get it in here. She's going to get into Varney just at the elbow. Arnie, Varney's going to drive down the lane. She goes up a shot. It's no good, but it's going to be out of bounds off the Lady Scotties. No call. Three Lady Scotty players met her there, and it was blocked, it looked like. It's going to be Trojanette's ball underneath as Elmore's looking to throw it in. Elmore's still looking to throw it in. It's going to come out top to Atkinson. Atkinson's going to pull up from just inside the three-point line. Her shot's no good. There's going to be a jump ball here on the floor, and it's going to go to the Lady Scotties. And Ashley got away with a walk right there. Kirkpatrick checks back in for the Lady Scotties. She's going to replace Jordy Goodman with six minutes to go in HVAC third quarter. Lady Scotties hanging around here at 18 to 17. They're subbing a lot too. Yes, they're playing. A, they're subbing in and out a lot tonight. As like I said in the previous session, the Lady Scotties have a chance to get the lead back right here. It's Green with it. She gets it off to Kirkpatrick being guarded by Elmore. Kirkpatrick's going to pull it for a three now. That's no good. Might have been a foul right here in front of us. Nothing called. As the ball's going to be thrown up to Elmore for the Trojanettes. Now it's inside there too. Strange, her shot's no good. Varney's on the floor with it with Green. And the ball's going to be thrown back in the backcourt. It's going to be an over and back call by the Trojanettes. 12 turnovers by the Trojanettes. 
they have actually been racking up in this quarter as well. I think it's about five here it is. in this quarter. 18-17, 30 left in this HVAC third quarter. As the Lady Scotties here got another chance. As Green has it, gets it off to Austin. Austin's got a lot of room here, gets it off to Hagen. She's being guarded by Strange. It's going to be over to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick's picked up by Elmore. Kirkpatrick's going to drive, try to get it into Hagen. She does now, with, met with three Trojanettes. It's going to be a steal for, never mind, it's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to go to the Trojanettes. It's going to be turnover number 13 for the Lady Scotties. And the Trojanettes got the ball. Five minutes left in the HVAC third quarter. It's Elmore with it in the front court for the Trojanettes. It's going to be off to Atkinson on the right side, guarded by Kirkpatrick. Trying to get to Varney. They do. Varney got it inside now. She goes up with a shot. That's good. That's a South Central Bank shot. It's a 2017 lead for the Trojanettes now. They got Varney going downhill there, and she got it in the post, she and she just laid it up and in on the spin move. As Austin's got it. She's going to drive now inside. She's going to go up with a shot. That's good. That's a South Central Bank shot. Coach Kelsey Kirkpatrick is going to take a 30-second timeout. We're going to take it as well. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCOU Sports. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise. And that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. WCLU. We're back in Scotty Jim. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barr. We got a HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Cynthia Austin drive right here that gets the Lady Scotty's back with them one and 20 to 19. Lady Scotty's trying to break. This winless drought in this series as well at 15 in a row. It's a long time. It's a long time. It's a long the time. boys also have a big losing streak as well against the Trojans. I think it's at 11 now as well. 26 of the last 32 as well. Wow. <laughs> That's where the where the Glasgow boys won five in a row between 2018 and 2020. That's it's a long drought. As the Trojan, long. as the ladies, guy's going to bring a pressure now. One, as, two, as Elmore's one. trapped, and she Turned loses over. it out of bounds. No, it's going to stay Trojanettes basketball. I like it. Speed them up a little bit, see if they can handle the ball. And it's going to be Atkinson to throw it in now as the ladies, guys, will back off the pressure now. It's a 22-19 lead. 4-30 left in HGCAC third quarter. As there was a trap there by the ladies, guys, as Varney's got it now. Varney is trapped. She has picked it up. It's back out front to Elmore in the middle of Strange. It's going to be a steal for the ladies, guys. And Strode got it off the green. And it's back tapped there by Varney. And it's going to go out of bounds off the Trojanettes. I like it. Sending them back a little trapping pressure and see how they handle it. That's going to be Riley Wilson to check off. Check back in for the Trojanettes. She replaces Taylor Strange. And it's going to be Kirkpatrick throw it in for the Lady Scotties. She's looking again, still looking again. It's going to be into Slagle up top. It's going to be in the corner to Austin. Cynthia's left wide open here. She's looking to get inside the green. Strode, she does. Gets it back up to Austin. Over to Slagle. Eddie's going to drive down the lane now. It's back up to Austin. Austin drives baseline now. She's cut off, and it's going to be a steal by Varney. And Strode has it on the floor and gets it off to Slagle. It's over to Green. She's going to fire up a three now. No good. Rebound goes in the hands of Gerald for the Trojanettes. And it's going to be Atkinson to bring it up. Atkinson throws it underneath Delmore, and it's going to go out of bounds. It's going to be a foul here on Riley Strode as she was going for the ball. That's going to be her third. Team fourth of the quarter. It's a good hard foul right there by Riley. She's playing hard. The next foul for the ladies' guys puts them in the Trojanettes in the bonus as it's Atkinson to throw it in for the Trojanettes. She's looking again. Can't get it in. Finally, he's going to get it to Barney, but it's going to be a steal by Kale Kirkpatrick. She's got it in the front court, gets it off to Slagle. Slagle has it. Slagle's going to bring it back out top. 340 left in HVAC third quarter. Slagle's going to drive down the lane now. Behind the back, goes up with a shot. It's good. It's a 21-20 lead for the ladies, guys. That is their first lead since early on in the first quarter. As Elmore has it being guarded by Green. Elmore kicks it out in the hands of Gerald. 
Gerald is looking for Varney. She's being guarded by Austin. Gerald gets it off to Atkinson. Atkinson's going to drive now. She goes to the rim and lays it in. That's a South Central bank shot. Puts them back on top, 22 to 21. As the Lady Scotties are just hanging around in this game. Kayla's playing great defense on Abigail Varney. She's it's really got to work for us. It's over to Slagle now. Gets it inside to Strode. Strode has it. She loses it in the hands of Gerald. And they're going to get Kayla Kirkpatrick for a foul. That's going to be her second team, fifth of the quarter. Foul count this quarter is 5-0. to zero. They're definitely in the bonus. They're now in the bonus. As it's going to be Atkinson to go to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot two. Russ trying to explain to Coach K what happened. I definitely agree with Kelsey right there. As Atkinson's first free throw attempt is good. She is two for three on the night, Chase. Two of three on the night. Yes, and this her next free throw attempt is trying to give the Trojanets a three-point lead. It is no good. Rebound goes to Strode, and she is fouled. That foul goes on Atkinson. That's her second team's first of the quarter. The 23-21 lead for the Trojanets. 2.45 left in HVAC third quarter. As Green has it in the front court. She's looking. She has an inside spin move on Atkinson. She's met underneath. She's going to bring it back out to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick gets it over to Austin. Austin has it out front guarded by Bird. Austin gets it in the corner for a green three now. That bounces around is out. Rebound is going to be tied up between Strode and Varney, and it's going to stay with the Lady Scotties. The hustle there by Riley Strode. Get that rebound. As Slagle looks like she has maybe a little blood on her knee, so she's going to have to come out. She's going to be replaced by Goodman. It's going to be Kirkpatrick to throw it in for the Lady Scotties. She gets it into Strode. Try to get in Strode. It's going to be a turnover. It's in the hands of Atkinson. Atkinson's going to bring it up the floor for the Trojanettes. She's being guarded by Green. Gets a screen from Bird. It's in the corner to Murphy, who just checked in for the Trojanettes as well. In the corner to Varney. Varney drives baseline now. She's met by Strode, and they're going to get her for a traveling violation. 15 turnovers by the Trojanettes. <laughs> it's a 23-21 lead for the Trojanettes. Two minutes left in HVAC third quarter. As Green has it, she gets a screen by Goodman. As Atkinson just falls down, Kirkpatrick's going to fire up a three now. That's no good. Rebound goes to Murphy for the Trojanettes. She's going to be met by Green. Murphy brings it in the front court. She drives down the lane, loses it in the hands of Kirkpatrick, though. Murphy a little out of control there, unlike her, and really – it's in the hands of Kayla Kirkpatrick. She's looking, picks up her dribble now. It's over to Green. As Green has it. Coach Kirkpatrick's going to take a timeout. Getting a little chippy in an area. Rest of to get into control of it. We're going to stay right here as it's a 23-21 lead for the Trojanettes with 131 left in the HVAC third quarter. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. Lady Scotty's hanging tough again here tonight in this district matchup. They're playing great defense. We're going to give you an HVAC Services instant replay during this timeout. It's going to be the Addie Slagle floater in the lane that gave the Lady Scotty's a 21, that gave them a 21 to 20 lead. It's 23 to 21 now. Lady Scotty's trailed by two, but have the basketball with 130 left in this third quarter. See if we can get Addie back in here. They're having trouble standing in front of her. She's on the bench right now where they're cleaning up her, her leg. Getting work, she's getting worked on over here by the trainers. It's going to be Kirkpatrick, Austin Green, Goodman, and Strode for the ladies. Guys, it's in the green. As Green has it up top, it's off to Strode at the elbow. Strode's looking. She's going to get it in the corner to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick talks about it, gets it off to Austin. Austin has it. She's going to fire up a free throw line, jump starts at short. Rebound goes in the hands of Wilson. It's in the hands of Varney now. She has it in the front court. She goes down the lane now, pulls up from eight feet. It's good. It's a 25-21 game now. Kirkpatrick quickly comes into the front court. Being guarded by Varney. One minute left in HVAC third quarter. 
It's going to be over to Austin. She's being guarded by Bird. Cynthia's going to drive baseline now, cut off by Bird. It's going to be a steal, and it's going to be out of bounds off the Lady Scotties. As Hagen checks back in for the Lady Scotties, she's going to replace Strode. Cynthia a little out of control right there. It's a 16 team turnovers for the Lady Scotties. And they're only down 25 to 21 as it's Trojanets basketball as Murphy's got it. She's going to be guarded by Green. Murphy gets it over to Atkinson. Austin is on her. It's going to be back out to Murphy. It's going to be inside to Atkinson, met by Hagen. Her shot is good. That's a South Central Bank shot. She kind of willed that one up, Chase. It got tipped I and everything. I would agree with that one. It's a 27-21 lead now. It ties their largest lead of the night. The 7-0 run by the Trojanettes as well. It's over to Goodman, out to Kirkpatrick. 19 seconds left in the quarter as Kayla gets it off to Green. Green's going to fire up a three now. It's blocked. It's in the hands of Hagen. Hagen's got it going to the rim. She misses the layup. Rebound goes to Riley Wilson. Quickly ahead goes to Atkinson. Atkinson's going down the lane. Pulls up for a jumper that's good. It's a 29-21 lead. That's going to end the HVAC third quarter. We will come back to bring you the Wilbert Trucking fourth quarter after a 30-second timeout on WCOU Sports. South Central Bank has been when you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. We're back in Scotty Gym. Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. It's the Trojanettes that have an eight-point lead, 29 to 21. After three quarters of play, we've got the Warburg Trucking fourth quarter. That was a 9-0 run to end the quarter for the Trojanettes. It's two sets of spurts there. The, I think the Scotties had a 6-0 run, and then uh, Barron County responded with a with a 9-0 run. Yeah, that the, really hurt. As us. the Lady Scotties took a one-point lead there as well, 21 to 20. It's going to be the Lady Scotties to open up the the quarter with the ball here, or excuse me, the Trojanette's going to open up the ball here to begin this while we're trucking fourth quarter. Let's see if we can get a big shot, get a, get somebody open, get a three, three going, and let's uh, get need a to, stop play some defense. Need to stop on defense here we to do. begin the quarter, though. That's going to be Atkinson, Barney, Elmore, Bird, and Bragg. As it's going to be Elmore with the ball for the Trojanette. It's going to be up top to Varney, in the corner to Bird. Bird gets it back out to Varney. It's going to be over to Elmore as Green went for the steal. Elmore pulls up for a jumper that's good. It's her first bucket of the night. It's a 31-21 lead now for the Trojanettes. Biggest lead of the night. It's over to Kirkpatrick for the Lady Scotties. It's going to be back to Slagle. Slagle drives down the lane, kicks it out to Green. Green did not shoot the ball. It's over to Kirkpatrick. She's being guarded by Elmore. It's going to be over to Austin. Austin gets it back out to Kirkpatrick. She's now going to fire up a three. That's no good. Long rebound goes to Green for the Lady Scotties. Back out to Austin. It's over to Slagle. Slagle drives baseline. She gets it over to Hagen, and it's blocked there by Bragg. Over to Elmore. Back to Atkinson. Atkinson throws it ahead to Bird. Bird has it. She's going to get called for a travel. 31-21. Trojanettes lead this ball game as we begin the Walbert trucking fourth quarter as Slagle's going to bring it in the front court. Being guarded by Varney. It's going to be over to Green. Going to get a screen from Austin. She is double teamed here at half court. And it's going to be a steal for the Trojanettes. And it's going to be thrown ahead to Bird. Bird has it. She loses it but gets it back. It's going to be in the hands now. It's going to be Lady Scotty basketball. They get the steal right there as Green has it. She now brings it up the front court and she's going to be fouled by Elmore. It's going to be her third, team second of the quarter. Both teams fighting hard for that ball. Both teams on the ground. Scotty's lined up with the Team ball. first of the quarter, excuse me. Lady Scotty basketball needing a bucket here. It's into Austin. It's going to be back to Kirkpatrick, picked up by Elmore. Over to Slagle. Hattie's going to drive baseline now. She's met by two Trojanet players. Picks up her dribble, gets it off to Austin. Cross-court pass goes to Green. Green has it, gets it back over to Slagle. Slagle's being guarded by Varney. Slagle's looking to drive. She cannot. She gets it back to Green. Green has it. 
It's going to be in the corner to Hagen. Hagen does drive baseline now, and she is going to be fouled by Bragg. So it's going to be her second team, second of the quarter. It's going to be Strode to check in, and Murphy, they are going to replace Atkinson and Austin for the Lady Scotties. It's going to be Kirkpatrick throw it in for the Lady Scotties. In the Strode in the corner. It's out to Green. Almost stolen by Murphy. Over to Kirkpatrick, guarded by Elmore. Strode's trying to get position inside. She finally did. It's Kirkpatrick. She loses it. It's off in the hands of Elmore. Elmore's going to the other end. She drives down the bucket, and she is going to lay it in and a foul. That's a South Central bank shot as well. That foul goes on Ja'Kali Green. That's her third team, first of the quarter. Good hustle by Ja'Kali to get down there and try to take that charge. As Goodman checks in for Green, Elmore's going to have one at the SCRTC free throw line. This is trying to get the Trojan out a 13-point lead. And she knocks it down. This is a 14-0 run for the Trojanettes as well. We need a shot here to stop the bleeding. As it's going to be Slagle, just under six minutes to go in the quarter, being guarded by Varney. Slagle's going to drive down the lane now. She's going to lose it right in the hands of Murphy. Murphy gets it ahead to Bird. Bird goes to the rim and lays it in. That's a South Central bank shot. And Coach Kelsey Kirkpatrick is going to take a timeout. And we are too. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. WCLU. We're back here in Scotty Gym. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. Trojanettes have now went on a 16-0 run. It's a 36-21 game. Trojanettes lead by 15 after the Scotty went up a point in the third quarter. Yeah, they uh, they really, I think they were, what did you say, 16 straight? 16 straight for the Trojanettes. We need a shot right here in a, in a bad way. Yes, it's going to be Lady Scotty basketball. It's Goodman, Slagle, Kirkpatrick, Strode, and Hagen for the Lady Scotties. That's going to come into Slagle. 5.40 left in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter. As Slagle's going to be trapped here by Bird, but she's going to drive baseline now. She gets a screen. It's back out to Goodman. Goodman's looking. She gets it back to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick gets it off to Slagle. Slagle's going to pull up for a three now. It's going to be off. Rebound's going to go out of bounds off the Lady Scotties. It's going to be Green and Austin check in for the Lady Scotties. They replace Goodman and Hagen. As the Trojanettes, as the Lady Scotties only have six points in the half so far. As Murphy brings it to the front court for the Trojanettes. It's over to Varney. It's in the corner to Bird. Bird brings it back out top to Murphy. It's going to be out to Bragg, and they're going to get a foul inside. Foul goes on Strode. That is going to be her fourth. I didn't see that one, Chase. I was blocked out. I could not see what was going on. It's going to be Murphy to throw it in for the Trojanettes. They're going to get into Bragg. Bragg has it. She goes down through the lane and lays it up and in. It's coming pretty easy now for the Lady Scotty or the, the Trojanettes. It's an 18 0 run for the Trojanettes as it's off to Slagle. She gets a screen from Varney. She's looking to drive. She has it down inside, kicks it out to Green. Green's going to bring it out front to Kirkpatrick. It's over to Austin in the corner. Austin's going to drive baseline on Bird. She's going to go up the shot. It's blocked. It's going to be in the hands of Bird. She's going to the other end now, and she's going to lay it up and miss it. Rebound goes. Elmore, she lays it back up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. Make that a 20-0 run for the Trojanettes. It's 40-21 to 21 now as Slagle has it. She's being guarded by Varney. She gets it over to Kirkpatrick in the corner. Kayla's going to drive inside now, and she's going to get out to green, and there's going to be a foul. Foul goes on Elmore. That's her fourth. Team third of the quarter as Norris checks in for the ladies, guys. She replaces Strode. As Murphy checks out, and also Elmore checks out. It's going to be Atkinson to check back in as well, and Gerald's. 
as Kirkpatrick gets it into Slagle in the corner. Gets it inside to Austin. Austin puts a spin move on, has to kick it back out to Green. Green's looking to drive on Murphy. She cannot. It's back to Kirkpatrick. She's going to fire up a three now. That's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Atkinson for the Trojanettes. Atkinson gets it over to Bird. It's in the corner to Varney. Varney gets it to Atkinson. She gives up a shot. It's no good, but she is fouled. That foul goes on Addison Norris. That's her second team, third of the quarter. That's in, and Ashley Atkinson to the SCRTC free climb where she is going to shoot two. Her free throw attempt is good. It's three for five on the afternoon. Please. Strange checks back in to replace Bragg, and Goodman checks back in to replace Kirkpatrick. As Atkinson's second attempt is good as well. She now has 12 points on the night for the Trojanettes. We need to score in a hurry right here. That's Slagle has it in the circle, being guarded by Varney. The green has it. She's going to drive down the lane now. She's cut off, and she traveled with it. It's going to be turnover number 20 for the Lady Scotties. It's going to be Atkinson to bring it up for the Trojanette. She's being guarded by Green. It's over to Gerald. She's being guarded by Austin. Gerald has it, picks up her dribble. She's looking to get it inside. She cannot. It's out to Bird. Bird's got it at the circle. Bird's looking to drive. She gets it out to Strain. She pulls up for a long jumper. In and out. Rebound goes to Green. Green quickly races to the other end. She's going to fire up a three now. That's no good. Rebound goes to Addison Norris for the Lady Scotties. She's looking to get it to green. She gets it back to green. Green's going to bring it back out top and get to, Sh to Slagle. Slagle's being guarded by Varney. She drives down the lane, spin move, goes up with a floater. It's no good, but she is fouled. Foul goes on Varney. That is her second, team fourth. That sends Addie Slagle to the SCRTC free climb where she is going to shoot two. Lady Scott is still trying to fight. Get to the rim. And he knocked his two free throws down, stop the bleeding. Her free throw attempt is no good. Kirkpatrick checks back in the game. She replaces Goodman. The latest guys have only scored six points in the half. Tell the two halves played a great first half. As Slagle's second attempt is no good. Rebound goes to Varney for the Trojanettes. It's going to be over to Gerald. She's got it on the right side, guarded by Norris. She picks up her dribble look and gets it in the corner to Strange. Strange has it guarded by Austin. Strange is trying to get it. He gets it into Bird. She goes up with a shot. That's good. That's a South Central Bank shot as well. It's a 44-21 game. As Austin pulls up for a long jumper, it's no good. Rebound goes to Atkinson for the Trojanettes as she quickly pushes the pace. She gets it over to Bird. Bird has it in the corner. She's being guarded by Kirkpatrick. She's going to go to the rim now, and she's going to miss the shot, but she is fouled. Foul goes on Kayla Kirkpatrick. That's her third. Team fourth. It's going to be Kleikendall and Hagen to check in for the Lace guys. They replace Austin and Slagle. Atkinson's looking to throw it in, and she gets it out to Strange. She pulls up a shot. It's no good. Rebound goes to Atkinson. Back out to Bird. She fires up a three now. That's good. That's an Elmore Realty auction three-point shot. It's a 27-0 run for the Trojanettes. It's 47-21. Trojanettes lead. Under two minutes to go in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. As Green's got it up top for the Lady Skies. She drives base. She's cut off. She now has it baseline. Kleikendahl picks it up for the Lady Skies. That's Kirkpatrick. She fires up a three now. That's no good. Long rebound is going to stay in bounds by Ja'Kali Green. She has it. Gets it back to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick has it. She brings it back out front. Kirkpatrick has it out front. 130 to go. It's over to Green in the corner. Green has it. She's being guarded by Bird. It's over to Hagen in the corner. Hagen looking. She's going to bring it back out top. It's out to Green. Green's being guarded by Bird. Gets a screen from Kirkpatrick. Green has it on the left side now. Drives down the lane. Goes up. It's blocked, but she gets it back. She goes right into Hagen, but she is fouled. 
That foul goes on Atkinson. That's her third. Team's fifth of the quarter. It sends Ja'Kali Green to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot two. Ja'Kali has not attempted a free throw on the night. That free throw goes around the rim and out. I hit everything but the net. It's going to be wholesale substitutions for both teams if Hannah Jolly checks in for the Lady Scotties. Also, Goodman, Strode will also check in for the Trojanettes now. It is going to be McFall. As Green's second attempt is good, that breaks the scoring drought there of 27 in a row by the Trojanettes. As it's going to be McFall. It's also going to be Griffiths. It's also going to be Wilson. And it's also going to be Russell. Russell for the Trojanettes. As, it, as McFall has it on the right side, and it's also going to be Jones for the Trojanettes. Hannah Jolly checked in also. Also, it's going to be tapped out of bounds there by the ladies' guys. 42 seconds left as Burton will check in for the Trojanettes. She's going to replace Jones. It's going to be Wilson to throw it in for the Trojanettes. She's going to get it in out top in the hands of McFall. She drives down the lane, and she is going to be fouled. Foul goes on Ja'Kali Green. That is her fourth, team fifth. That is going to send Addison McFall to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot two. Her free throw attempt is good. It's a 48-22 game, 39 seconds left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. McFall's second attempt is good as well. It's 49 to 22. That is a 29 to one run. Take away After from the Lady Scotties had a 21 to 20 lead. As Green has it, she drives down the lane now. Goes up with a shot. It's no good, but she is fouled. That foul goes on Hannah Wilson. That is her first. Team sixth of the quarter. That sends Ja'Kali Green to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot two. Ja'Kali's playing hard. She, she's not giving up regardless of the score. She's still driving and getting to, the, getting to the basket. Her free throw attempt is good. That sends Audrey Jones back into the game for the Trojanettes. She replaces Marley Russell. Green's second attempt is no good. Rebound goes in the hands of McFall. As Strode is down on the other end, as the Trojanettes have it in the front court. It's going to be inside there in the hands of Griffiths, and she lays it in as Strode is down on the other end. The 51-23 game as Norris is going to check in for the Lady Scotties. She replaces Strode. Fifty-one twenty-three. That's going to probably be the final score here. As Green's going to have it for the Lady Scotties. She's just going to hold it up top. This is going to drop the Lady Scotties to three and seventeen on the year, and zero and five in the district. That sends the Trojanettes to fourteen and four on the year, and four and one in the district. We will be back after a six-minute timeout for our Don Franklin post-game show and our Garcia's Grill sizzling stats on WCOU Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. If you already have internet through SCRTC, there's a pretty good chance your speed just went up, maybe even paying less. And if you don't, check on Fiber Optic with SCRTC in your area because 500 meg is now only 70 bucks. 
That's 500 down and upload. And if you want more speed, SCRTC got it. Up to 5 gig of it. Make the switch right now at SCRTC.com and we'll do the install free. This won't last forever. With unmatched customer support, SCRTC, your best and last internet provider. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candied bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Hardy's, goodness in the making. Glasgow Scotty's Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau Agent Joe Myers. 
Now, the Don Franklin Auto Post Game Wrap Up. Back here in Scotty Jim, it's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. Lady Scotty's losing a tough one here tonight, 51 to 23. That drops them to 0 and 5 in district, 3 and 17 on the year. Takes the Trojanettes to 14 and 4, 4 and 1 in the district. We've got the Don Franklin Post Game Show also later on. Right now, maybe our Garcia's grill sizzling stats as Matthew has the final tabulations over here. As Mr. Barber here, Mr. Octavius Barber is going to look at our final team stats here. Lady Scotty drop drop a tough one tonight. They they played great the first half, just couldn't just ran out of gas basically in the second half. Um, let's let's go ahead and look at these stats for your uh, Trojanettes. They go 18 for 37 from field goals. They're one and five from the three point line. 17 rebounds is 17 turnovers. They were 14 for 21 for the free throw line. And they had 13 fouls for your Lady Scotties. They take the same amount of field goals. They went 8 for 37 from the field goal. They were 1 for 18 from the three-point line, 15 rebounds, 20 turnovers, 6 for 12 from the free throw line, a total of 19 team fouls. Your final score is Barron County Trojanettes 51, your Glasgow Lady Scotties 23. Thank you. We're going to go through our individual stats here. First, we're going to start with the Trojanettes. We'll start with Abby Varney. She had 13 points on four of eight shoot, all from inside the three-point line. She was five of six from the three-point or free throw line, one rebound for 13 points. Next, we got Katie Elmore. She was three of four from the field, all inside the arc, one of one at the line, two rebounds, one offensive. She ended up with seven points. Also with three points is Taylor Strange. She is one of four from the field, all two-point attempts, one of two at the line for her three points. Katie Gerald's had one point. 0 of 4 from the field, 0 of 3 from 3, 1 of 4 at the line, 3 rebounds for her 1 point. And Ashley Atkinson had 12 big points for the Trojanettes. She had 4 of 9 from the field, 0 of 1 from the 3, 4 of 6 at the line, 6 rebounds, 2 offensive boards for her 12 points. Also, Shelby Bird off the bench was 4 of 5 for the Trojanettes, 1 of 1 from 3, 3 of 4 from inside the 3. She had one rebound for nine points. Also, Hannah Bragg was one of two of the field for two points. Also, Katie Murphy did not score, but she did register two rebounds. Also, Riley Wilson did not score, but got a rebound. Also, Addison McFall was two of two from the free throw line, one rebound for two points. And Reagan Griffiths was one of one from the field for two points, a team total of 51 for the Lady Scotties. They, they got Addie Slagle, who was four of 11 for the field, one of six from the three, 0 of two at the line, one offensive rebound for nine points. So Kylie Green was 0 of eight from the field, 0 of five from three, two of four from the free throw line, four rebounds, two offensive boards for two points. Cynthia Austin was two of seven from the field, 0 of one from three, three rebounds for her four points. Kayla Kirkpatrick, 0 of six from the field, all three point attempts, one of two at the line for one point. Carly Hagen was one of three from the field, one of two at the line, five rebounds, two offensive rebounds for three points. Riley Strobe was one of two from the field, two of two at the line, one rebound for four points. And Addison Norris got an offensive rebound. That's a team total of 23 for the ladies, guys, as they lose 51 to 40, or 51 to 23. And that is our Garcia's grill sizzling stats. I mean, the ladies, guys, had a 21 to 20 lead in this ball game, and the Trojanettes ended the game on a staggering 31 to 2 run. That's a that's a tough way to lose and you, you don't see that very it often definitely either. Is. Yeah, yeah, Something right. happened at, that run at the thir end of the third quarter they had looked like it lingered into the fourth quarter cuz they went on a 9-0 run in the third quarter and then finished the game on a 22 to 2 run in the fourth quarter. Yeah, we uh we kind of was waiting for everybody else to move around. We kind of stopped it and just watched the offense just stand there basically and then you know the old turnover bug hit us again. I think we had like six straight possessions of six turnovers. And, and had you know, 20 for the game, I believe is what you said. Yeah. Had a total of 20 turnovers. And Barron, Barron County also had 17 turnovers for the ball game. So they didn't really take care of the ball either. Ladies, guys had 20. We're going to take a one-minute timeout. Coach Kirkpatrick has not come out yet. When she does, we will get her on here. We will come back either to start the Don Franklin pregame show or we'll get Coach Kurt Packer on here. We'll be back after a one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. 
During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit southcentralbank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. CLU. We're back here in Sky Gym. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. Coach Kirk Patrick has not come out yet, so we will just go ahead and start with the pregame show for the boys. And when Coach Kirk Patrick comes on, we will get her on. So we got the Scotties and the Trojanettes. The Trojanettes are coming in 13 and 4 on the season, 4 and 0 in the district. After a year, after many thought in the community. Barron County might have a down down year, but no, that's that's not the case. They're four and zero in the district, thirteen and four on the year. They won this district contest sixty eight to fifty five in Trojan Gym two weeks ago. The Scotties are coming off a loss to Warren East, a devastating loss to Warren East on Tuesday night, sixty four to sixty two. That drops them to five and ten on the year, one and three in the district. This matchup really doesn't mean much for the district standings, per se, but I, I would say it means a lot to the Scotties to try to win this ball game, Mo. Oh, yeah, I mean. It's a rival game. District's already set. You know, we already know who we're playing, but, you know, it's, it's a rival game. We want to beat them. They want to beat us. And uh, the atmosphere in here is crazy. There's not a seat left to, to sit, so it's definitely going to be a game. Yes, I would agree with you there. It's going to be a highly contested game. As we know, Barron County loves to shoot the three ball. They shoot almost 25 a game. They make over nine a game, and they will shoot it from absolutely anywhere on the floor. I know uh, I wasn't able to, to watch the first game, but I watched it on TV. I wasn't able to be there. Um, they they got off to a hot start. You know, they I think they jumped out like 25 to six or something like that. They hit like six straight threes, and you know that. It, it's hard to come back from that in a high school basketball game. Yeah, I remember in the first quarter as I'm looking back through my stats here, the Trojans hit five opening threes in that first quarter, two of them by Mason Bunch, one by Waylon Clemens, and one by Bray Bewley and also Kate Hardy. As here comes Coach Kelsey Kirkpatrick over here. We will go ahead and get her on here real fast, get our interview here. That's Coach Kelsey Kirkpatrick, six down. She's going to put the headset on. All right, we got Coach Kelsey Kirkpatrick joining us after a 51-23 to 23 loss. Coach, we had a 21-20 to 20 lead. I thought we were playing really good. And then all of a sudden, they went on a 31-2 to 2 run there to end the ball game. I, that, you don't see that run happen very often, as we would say, but – that run, I thought the run there at the end of the third quarter was kind of big for them. Oh, yeah, it was it was huge. And, and, you know, we just we handed them the ball. Like, they were playing great defense. They were playing good off, great offense. You know, once once you kind of get that momentum, everything just opens up. And it, it opened up for them. You know, they was hitting some mid-range shots in transition that they normally, you know, they, they didn't start out shooting. And then, you know, once they got that momentum, they knew it, they knew it was going in. So, uh Barron played a great game. You know, it's just we, we got to stop getting down on ourselves. Yeah, the 20 turnovers is kind of what I was looking at. Most of them came in the second half yeah. and later on yeah. in the game. I mean. And uh, we, we just we talked about it. Like, do we work on driving kicks? Do we work on attacking gaps? And, you know, if we do, then you got to take that in and you got you to relate it to the game. And we're having a hard time relating the stuff that we're learning in the game. And, you know, hope, hopefully it pieces together. You know, there's still time. We, we're, we're not done. You know, this doesn't define the season. None of the games, you know, we're 3-16. and 16. Those 19 games doesn't – they don't determine our season. Yeah, we, this, we still got plenty of time to play. Right. This game didn't really even 
amount to nothing in no, the district standings no. either tonight. The only game that really matters in the district is the one we're going to play in Allen County here in, in about a month. Absolutely. You know it. And, and uh, I've, I've told the girls multiple times, and I'm sure a lot of people around here would agree, you know, this, this district is tough. Uh, I'm sure nobody's saying, I want to pick them, I want to pick them. You know, it, it doesn't – you don't know what game you're going to get that night from anybody. So, you know, it's going to be a, a good tournament, and we, we just got to keep fighting and staying focused. Yep. We're going to look to bounce back on Monday at the JV yep. Varsity doubleheader against South Warren, which was a rescheduled game from the snow yep. a few weeks ago. So it will be a JV Varsity game starting at 6 p.m. in Scotty Gym. We will see you back here on Monday night against South Warren. Thanks yep. for coming out, Coach Thank Kirkpatrick. You. That's Coach Kirkpatrick at their 51-23 loss. That takes them to... 3-17 and 17 on the year, 0-5 oh in the district. We have about five minutes here before tip-off from our boys' contest. We're going to stay right here and finish off the Don Franklin pregame show with the boys. We're going to go back to talking about the Trojanettes where they make over nine threes a game, almost ten a game. From the times they have won their games, they have made over ten threes a game. The last time these two teams met, they made nine threes as, wow, in girls' action in the other district game, a big win for Warren East tonight. They win in overtime, 75-74 to 74 against Allen County. Avery Morris has a career-high 35 points before fouling out late in regulation late. She's a heck of a player. I enjoy watching her. Um, That's a big district win for Warren East, too, to keep their hopes alive to get in that number one seed yep. in the district. They – Warren East will have to play, I believe, one more district game, right? Maybe they're last. I think they it's their last Allen district again. game. They play Allen one they more time. Allen so again. they've got to beat Allen one more time yep. to possibly get the number one seed in this district as well. But back to the boys boys here. The last time these two teams played, Barron County made nine threes in that ball game. Five of them became in the first quarter. Also, they got up out to a 23-6 to six lead on the Scotties as well in that ball game. That was big. Um, I, I remember uh, – they was they was just raining threes. It looked like we didn't even realize that they could shoot threes. Um, that, but the three point shot has become such an important factor in the in the game now that you gotta you gotta know where the shooters are. And they're gonna come out. They're gonna take thirty threes and they're gonna try to hit ten of them. They hit ten of them. They're probably gonna win. Yep. And they took a season low. And I was looking through all their stats. Season low, sixteen threes against us last time. So after really the first quarter of that ball game. It was, and they made nine of those 16 too. They shot over 50% in the field in that ball game as well. As the Scotties are looking to try to repeat that performance against Barron County, but win the ball game, as J.C. Walburn and Jarek Martin combined for 43 points of their 55 in that ball game. Them two players have to be really key for the Scotties tonight. Absolutely, I think Jarek wound up with 23 in that game. Um, they had trouble staying in front of him. He could pretty much get to the to the basket whenever he wanted. Um, looking for a repeat uh, performance from J.C. Uh, the, the game he had against Warren, uh, Warren East was a great game. I'd like to see him do that again tonight. Well, and here's some stats for you that's kind of staggering. Barron County has won 25 of the last 31 in the series. They have won 10 in a row. They won this last game 68-55 to 55 as well. They won both meetings last year. The Scotties won five in a row between 2018 2020. Other than that, the Scotties got one win in 31 game or 32 game or 31 games against this Trojan team. It's a heck of a stat right there, Chase. It it took me a little time to look that <laughs> up too, but that is the stat that stands out to me. This Trojan team will shoot a bunch of threes. They they look to get it inside a little bit, but mostly they're going to shoot threes and. This Scotty team's going to have to guard the three-point line as well. I Absolutely, mean, they did, and they did in that second in that second quarter of that Barron County game, and continued to do so as well. It's just they got to get Martin and Walbert involved. Jared Martin has to take 15 shots in this game tonight for, I think, for it to be a really close game as well. He's got to knock them down. He's got to be able to knock down the jump shot down tonight as well. Absolutely, Coach Buford has this team just running, transition, 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 and. I, Barron County has trouble keeping up with them. And, you know, our defense stepped up and played great defense after they went on that run. I expect the same thing tonight. We're going to give a quick run through of our sponsors here again. We got Don Franklin, TJ Regional Health, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services. We got HVAC also for the third quarter, Elmore Realty and Auction, SCRTC. We got Hardy's Hot and Fresh, the play of the game. 
And we got Garcia's for the real sizzling stat. We got about 40 seconds before tip off here. Gonna give you the starters for both teams right here. We're first gonna start with the Trojans. As they're gonna start at guard, Bray Buey, he's a junior. Also starting guard's gonna be junior Tate Spillman. Also starting is gonna be forward Graham Hall, he's a senior. Starting at forward is gonna be Mason Bunch, he's a senior. Also starting at forward is gonna be Waylon Clemens, he is also a junior. Head coach of the Trojans is Warren Cunningham. For your Scotty tonight, it's gonna be starting at guard, senior guard, J.C. Walbert. Also starting at guard is gonna be sophomore Jarek Martin. Also starting at guard is gonna be JoJo Driver, he is a junior. Also starting at forward is going to be Jeremiah Driver. He's a junior. And starting at the other forward tonight is going to be sophomore Landon Minton getting one of his first starts of the year, I believe, tonight. Coach, Coach Buford is high on Orlando. Lando plays hard. He, he rebounds. He does everything you ask him to do. I'm thinking he's probably starting Landon tonight maybe to put a little size out there against these Barron County forwards that are out here tonight as well. Gives us a little bit more length, too, to try to contest with their three-point shooters. Yeah, and I would agree with that. And also, I, I mean, you look at this Trojan lineup, they've got size. They will shoot the three ball anywhere. And, and I mean, the Trojans will shoot the ball anywhere from like we said. Also, they got good guard play from Bray, Bray Buey and Tate Spillman as well. But the Scotties are going to have to shoot the three ball tonight more than they have been. They got... They beat, got, they got beat by the three ball, 27 to 27 to six in that ball game. The Scotties only made two threes in that ball game against Barron. The last time Barron made nine. And made nine. And I think right I think on their season average. They'll be ready for them tonight. Uh, let's, let's just get uh, Jerry King in some action and JC in the action. What's our three keys to the game for the Scotties to get a victory here tonight and to break the streak? We got to defend the three, as you know. The, we can't, and we can't get off to a slow start. And we got to get some great guard play between JC and John, uh, John Carter and uh, Jared. You're correct. As the Scotties end up finishing, they finish their starting lineups here. That's going to conclude our Don Franklin pregame show for the boys. We got the Walbert Trucking tip off here. We got our same three officials, Jamie and Bailey, Chris Reeder, and Jeremy Harris. It's gonna be Graham Hall to jump in a circle for the Trojans. It's probably gonna be Jarrett Martin, if I had to guess here, to jump for the Scotties here. In a big 15th district matchup here for the Scotties. Needing to win here tonight. Needing to win here to give them confidence for the rest of the year as well, I would say. Yeah, this, this game don't mean much in the in the standings in the district, but this means a lot to these fans behind us. As we get the Walbert trucking tip off, it's Martin and Hall, and the tip is gonna be won by the Scotties. It's gonna be off to Martin. Martin's gonna open up at point guard here to open this ball game as the Trojans go man to man. As JoJo Driver has it, it's over to Walbert on the right side. It's gonna be a lot of play for Martin, but he gets it. Martin has it inside. He spin moves. Goes up with it. It's good. Nice spin move there by Jarrett Martin. Gives the Scotties the first leading game at two to zero. Good start for the Scotties there as well. Has it off to Buley in front of us here. He's guarded by Walbert. Scotties open up man to man. It's going to be inside the hall. Hall goes up with the shot. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Clemens. Clemens goes back up with it. It's good. That's a South Central bank shot. It's a 2 2 game as Walbert quickly comes to the other end for the Scotties. He's going to get a screen from Jeremiah Driver. Walbert has it. He goes behind the back now. He has the three-point line. It's going to be off to JoJo Driver. Driver's going to drive down the lane. He puts up a floater that's short. Rebound goes to Buley for the Trojans. He quickly brings it up the floor. Got it by JoJo Driver. Crosses the timeline. He drives down the lane now. It's out in the hands of Clemens. Clemens now drives down the lane. He goes up. He kicks it out to Spillman. Spillman pump fakes Walbert. Pulls up for a jumper that's short. Rebound goes to Walbert. He quickly takes it the other way. Walbert's looking to run. He has it down in the lane. He spin moves, goes up inside, puts up a shot that's good. Good take by J.C. to get down at the basket. It's a 4-2. Scotty's lead as they look to bring a hair of a pressure here as Buley's got it for the Trojans. He's being guarded by Walbert. It's over to Clemens on the right side, left side. Trying to get it to Bunch. They cannot. Clemens is being guarded by Mo Martin. It's off in the hands of Spillman, guarded by JoJo Driver. It's off to Bunch. It's over to Buley on the right side. It's going to be a steal for Martin. Martin's got it. He's running, outrunning the defense. He goes up with it. He is fouled. 
Jarek read his eyes the whole way. I saw it. Foul's going to go on Bray Buey. That's his first team's first of the quarter. It's going to send Jarek Martin to the SCRTC free climb where he's going to shoot two. Good start for the Scotties in this ball game as well. Martin's first free throw attempt is short. Martin on the year. Shooting free throws at. Martin shoots it on the year at 65%. His second free throw attempt is no good as well. It's Buey with it in the front court for the Trojans. It's to bunch at the free throw line. He's being guarded by Jeremiah Driver. It's out to Spillman. Spillman was looking to put up three. He could not. Good close out there by the Scotty. As Spillman's looking. Spillman still is looking. He's got it on the right side now. He picks up his dribble guarded by Driver. He's looking. He can't get it to anybody. Gets it out to Clemens. And he's going to be fouled by Jarrett Martin. That's going to be his first team's first of the quarter. It's going to be Buey to throw it in right in front of us here. He's going to get it in. It's going to be back to Buey as Hall got it. Back to Buey. Buey goes down the lane. He kicks it out to Clemens. Clemens drives down the lane. He kicks to Buey. Buey's got it. He kicks out the bunch. He fires up a three now. It's no good. Rebound is going to be saved inbounds by JoJo Driver off to Mitten. It's over to Martin at the 4-2 lead for the Scotties as we have it. Just under 5.30 left in this first quarter as Walbert's got it for the Scotties. He's got it in the circle, guarded by Buey. It's going to be off to Jeremiah Driver. He's looking now. He gets it off to Jarrett Martin. Martin has it. He's going to drive down the lane now. Kicks it out to JoJo Driver. He brings it back on top. He drives down the lane. Pulls up from the free throw line. His shot is good. It's a 6-2 lead for the Scotties. Good screen coming off the coming off that and, Jay, and JoJo hits that jump shot. It's Buley bringing it into the front court. He's being guarded by Walbert. Gets a screen from Hall. Buley drives it inside. He's cut off. He gets it inside there to Hall. He puts it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. The 6-4 lead for the Scotties now. As both Trojan buckets have come from the paint. Walbert's got it for the Scotties. He's going to drive up the left side now. Spin move into the lane. Puts up a shot that's good. He's got four of the first eight for the Scotties. An 8-4 eight, eight, lead. Picking off right where he left off against Warren East. As Buey has it in the front court now. He's going to drive down the lane. He's going to get an easy layup. But it's no good there, but he's fouled. That foul goes on Landon Mitten. That's his first team second of the quarter. That sends Bray Buey to the SCRTC free climb where he's going to shoot two. His first free throw attempt is good. Nothing but the bottom of the net. He's a pretty good free throw shooter. He's shooting about 81% from the free throw line. And Trojans do shoot free throws really good as a team, though. And really second attempt is good as well. It's an 8-6 lead for the Scotties. As Walbert has it in the circle for the Scotties. Walbert has it on the left side. Gets a screen from Mitt. Walbert's got it up top at the three point line. He's going to the corner now. Hands it off to JoJo Driver. He dribbles to the elbow. He's looking to get inside. Back out to Jeremiah Driver. He drives down the lane. Goes up with a shot that's no good. Ball's tipped around in the hands of Clemens for the Trojans. He brings it up the floor now. It's off the bunch. Bunch gets it back to Clemens. He loses it in the hands of Jarrett Martin. Martin's going to go the other end, but it's going to be stolen back by the Trojans in the hand of Clemens over to Buey. Buey's going to thought about firing up a three. He does not. Now he will fire up a three. It's good. It's an Elmore Realty and auction three-point shot. Gives the Trojans their first lead of eight to seven. Or excuse me, nine to eight. It's Walker with it for the Scotty. He's got the circle. 320 left in this first quarter. Mitten has it up top. Gets it off to Jeremiah Driver. He's being guarded by Bunch. It's over to Martin. He's being guarded by Clemens. Back to JoJo Driver. He drives down the lane. He loses it. It's in the hands of Bunch. Gets it off to Buley. He gets ahead to Spillman. Spillman's driving down the lane. He goes up a shot. It's no good, but he gets it back. Bunch now will drive down the lane. It's off to Hall. Hall's looking for Spillman. Gets it to him. He now drives down the lane. Kicks it out to Bunch. Bunch couldn't fire it up. He drives down the lane. He's cut off. He's looking. He can't get to nobody. He finally gets to the Buey, and it's off to Clemens. 2.23 left in this first quarter. Clemens has it up top. He's looking for Graham Hall down low. He gets it to him. He's guarded by Mitten. He goes up, and it's blocked by Jarrett Martin. Now he gets it off to Martin again. 
Good play there by Jarrett Martin to get the block. Martin's got it in the circle for the Scotties. He's being guarded by Clemens. He's going to get a screen from Jeremiah Driver. He's going to drive down the lane with it. Goes right to the rim and lays it in. That's a South Central bank shot. He had one dribble and straight into the lane there. Gets the Scotties back on top, 10-9. to nine. Well, much defense there that's going to be able to stop him from getting to the rim. And Spillman has it on the right side. He's being guarded by JoJo Driver. Drives baseline. He's cut off, and they're going to get a foul here on JoJo Driver. It's going to be his first team's third of the quarter. It's going to be Nunley and Bradley in for the Scotties. Also, it's going to be Compton and Hardy for the Trojans. They replace Clemens and Hall. Going to the bench for the Scotties is going to be Jeremiah Driver and Jarrett, Jarrett Martin stayed in the game. It's going to be Mitten and Jeremiah Driver to the bench. Five. Spillman's trying to get five. it in. They're going to get a five down here on the Trojans, and that's a turnover. It's their third of the game. It's a 10-9 lead for the Scotties. 2-10 left in this opening quarter. As the ball's going to come into Walbert. He's going to cross the timeline with two minutes left in this opening quarter. As the Trojans now in two, three. is in a two an extended 2-3 zone right here. As I, we thought they might see a little bit of zone tonight. It's going to be into Martin the Mill. Inside of Nunley, he's going to lay it up and in. Nice passing there by the Scotty to get a bucket underneath. Now the Scotty thought about pressure. It's in the corner of Compton. He brings it back out the bunch. He thought about a three drives down the lane. He's met. It's going to be over here in the hands of Compton again. Back to Bunch over to Hardy, who just checked into the ball game. He's being guarded by Bradley. It's off to Compton. Compton drives down the lane, kicks it out to Spillman. He goes down the lane. He's going to look to lay it up. It's no good, but he is fouled. That foul is going to go on JoJo Driver. That's his second team, fourth of the quarter. Fans over there wanted to go to him. The Barron County fans wanted to go to him, but I don't think it was. It's going to be Tate Spillman to go to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. Trojans lead 12 to nine. Or excuse me, Scotty's lead 12 to nine. As Spillman's first free throw is short. Jeremiah Driver checks back in for the Scotty. He replaces JoJo Driver who now has two fouls. Spillman's usually a pretty good free throw shooter. He's shooting about 76%. That's an unusual miss for Spillman too. As his second free throw attempt now is good. It's a 12 10 lead for the Scotties. 120 left in this opening quarter. A better start to this game for the Scotties as opposed to the last district Definitely contest. Is. It's over to Bradley for the Scotties. Back to Walbert. Walbert gets it over to Nunley. Nunley's going to drive in in the zone. He gets it tipped around back out to Walbert. Walbert's just going to bring it back out to the circle with a minute to go in this quarter as the Trojans are in this 2 3 zone. It's over to Bradley. Back out to Nunley. Over to Bradley. Bradley's going to fire up a three now. That's good. That's an Elmore Realty auction three-point shot. He gets the Scotties on top, 15 to 10. Bradley makes the three for the Scotties there as well. One of his first on the year. It's over to Spillman for the Trojans. 40 seconds left in the quarter. He's being guarded by Nunley. Spillman's going to drive down the lane. He is going to be fouled there by Nunley. His first, team's fifth of the quarter. It's going to send Tate Spillman to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. where he is one of two on the night so far. His first attempt bounces around and goes out. It's going to be Hall to check back in for the Trojans. He replaces Mason Bunch. 33 seconds left in the quarter. It's a 15-10 lead for the Scotty Spillman's at the line here for one. Spillman's second attempt is no good as well. Rebound goes to Jarrett Martin for the Scotties. He gets it off to Walbert. Spillman one of four at the line. That is unusual for him. Walbert's got it in the circle with 23 seconds left in the quarter, holding for one shot here. He's being guarded by Hardy. Looks like we're about to get a screen. He's going to try to get to the rim. It's going to be a flat, one four flat play here. As I think it may be Jeremiah Driver to come set this screen for Walbert. Eight seconds to go as Walbert has it. He's going to drive down the lane now. He's going to go up a shot. It's no good, but he is fouled. That foul goes on Cade Hardy. It's his first team, second of the quarter. They're going to give 
Walbert two shots here as well. So he's going to get two shots at the SCRTC free throw line. Walbert is about an 85% shooter on the year. His first one is good. With 2.6 seconds left in the quarter, Walbert's got one more here to give this guy a seven-point lead. His free throw second one is good as well. It's a 17-10 lead for the Scotties. Two seconds left in the quarter. It comes into Buley. Buley goes up the sideline. He throws one up from half court. That's just off. After one quarter of play, the Scotties lead 17 to 10. We're back after a 30-second timeout in WCLU Sports. Want to slash your cable bill? Save over $20 a month with MyStream TV from SCRTC, the savings alternative with the same great channel lineup you've always been accustomed to. Packages as low as $85 even include Internet, at least 200 meg. This is a no-brainer. No more cable boxes, just an app. And you even get an extra stream. Wait till we show you catch-up TV. Compare your current service to the new MyStream TV from SCRTC, 678-2111. Call and save today. WCLU. We're back here at Scotty Gym. Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. We've got an HVAC services an instant replay. It's going to be the Jalen Bradley three there in the first quarter that propels the Scotty to a 17 to 10 lead after one quarter of play. Scotty's looking good so far on the defensive end. Good first quarter by the Scotty's limited him to uh, only four three point attempts. As the Lady Gators come back to defeat Warren Central 51 to 44 in a district contest in the 14th. As it's going to be Trojan basketball to open up the second quarter of play. It's going to be Compton, Bewley, Spillman, Hall, and Hardy for the Trojans. It's going to be Walbert, Martin, Nunley, Jeremiah Driver, Jalen Bradley for the Scotties as it comes into Bewley. He's going to drive down the lane immediately now, and he's going to pull up a floater. It's no good. Rebound goes to Walbert for the Scotties, and he's looking to run. He brings it across the timeline. He's looking. He's going to drive down the lane now. He's going to go up a shot, and he is fouled. That foul goes on Kate Hardy. That's his second team, third of the quarter. That's going to send Jackson Reese to the scorer's table. He's going to replace Hardy. As Martin's going to throw it in from underneath for the Scotties. Martin's looking to get it in. He's going to get it in to Walbert. Walbert has it at the elbow. He decides to bring it back out. He's being guarded by Reese. Walbert's going to probably drive down the lane. He will. He steps back. He gets it in to Driver. Driver's double team now. He kicks it out to Nunley. Nunley has it. He's going to fire up a jumper. It's way off. Rebound goes to Buley for the Trojans. He brings it back in the front court. Buley's looking to drive. He gets it off to Spillman. Spillman's going to fire up a three now. It's in and out. Rebound goes to Nunley. Scotty's lucky there. Spillman three didn't go down. Nunley gets it ahead to Walbert. Walbert has it on the left side. Back out to Bradley. Over to Jeremiah Driver. He's going to fire up a three from the top of the key. It's going to be good. That's an Elmer Realty in auction. Three-point shot. The Scotties have doubled up the Trojans so far. It's 20 to 10. Good-looking shot there by Jeremiah Driver. I'd like to see a little bit more of that. As Buey has it, he gets it off the reach. It's going to be a kick ball there by Bradley. And he goes out of bounds off the Trojans at the Scotties. It's going to be Clemens to check back in for the Trojans. He is going to replace Tate Spillman. And it's going to be Buey for the Trojans. He's going to get it in to Reese. Reese is guarded by Bradley. He drives down the lane now. He goes up and shot. It's no good. And they're going to get a blocking foul on Jeremiah Driver. It's going to be his first team first of the quarter. That sends Jackson Reese to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot too. I don't know about that one, Chase. I thought he had his feet set. Reese's first free throw attempt is short. Landon Mitten checks back into the ball game. He replaces Jeremiah Driver. Reese's second attempt now is good. It's a 20 to 11 game, 650 left in this second quarter. As Walbert's got it guarded by Reese up top. He's gonna get a screen from Mitten. Hall meets him. Walbert has his elbow. He pulls up for the jump shot now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Clemens for the Trojans. He brings it in the front court. Gets it off to Reese, but stolen by Nunley. Nunley's got a break here. He's got Martin ahead. Martin's going to go to the rim. 
and lay it in. That's a South Central bank shot. It's a 22 to 11 game as Bewley gets it off the top and he fires up a three now. It's short, rebound goes to Nunley. Nunley's off to the races. Nunley's gonna go to the rim and it's stripped there by Bewley. He throws it ahead now. It's in the hands of Reese. Reese has got it. Six minutes left in this second quarter. It's in the corner to Reese. It's gonna be inside to nobody. It's gonna be saved in bounds by Hall in the hands of Clemens and they're gonna get a foul on Bradley. That's his first, team second of the quarter. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the hall. Buey gets it back at the 22 to 11 lead for the Scotties. As Buey gets it off to Compton, he's gonna fire up a three now. It's gonna be short. Rebound's gonna be to Landon Mitten. It's off to Bradley. Bradley's off, running up the sideline for the Scotties. He goes down the lane. He's gonna put up a little short jumper. It's no good. Rebound goes to Buey for the Trojans. He's gonna bring it up. He gets it off to Hall. Hall has it. He goes down in the lane. He goes up with a shot that's good. That's a South Central bank shot. Fell asleep right there. It's a 22 to 13 lead though for the Scotties. As Walbert's going to bring it to the front court. 525 left in this second quarter. In a very fast moving game so far. Walbert's going to take it to the left side now. He's going to get it off to Martin. Martin has it. He's going to drive down the lane. He kicks it out for a Nunley three now. It's good. That's an Elmer Realty, an auction three-point shot. Scotty's take a 25 to 13 lead. As Bewley goes quickly to the other end, he misses the shot. Rebound goes to Martin for the Scotty. Martin brings it in the front court. He slowed it down. He's going to slow it down. Well, they got the circle. Jack ISOed up at the top. It's a one-four set here for the Scotty's. Martin has it in the circle. It's a 12-point lead though for the Scotty's early on as Martin's going to hand it off to Bradley. He's being guarded by Clemens. Bradley's got it. He's going to go down the lane now. He's going to pull up a floater. It's good. That's a South Central bank shot. Coach Warren Cunningham has seen enough. It's a 27-13 lead for the Scotties. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. You. We're back here in Scotty Jim. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. We're going to go with the HVAC Services Instant Replay. It's going to be the Bradley floater in the lane here. That puts the Scotties up 27 to 13. And now the Scotties are going to bring some full court pressure right here as well. It's Buey with it. He's going to break the press. He's guarded by Nunley. It's going to be over here to Bunch. It's in the corner to Reese. Reese is going to drive baseline. He's cut off by Walbert. It's going to be a steal by the Scotties. Walbert's got it now. Walbert's going to the rim now. He will go to the rim now, and he will not make it. They're going to call him for a traveling violation. I don't know about that one, Chase. <laughs> that was, I thought it was like a Euro step move right there. It's, it's going to be Trojan basketball. It's only the third turnover for the Scotties, though. Just let it go and just play. Yep. Scotty's playing well so far. It's 27 to 13. And Spillman has it. He crossed the timeline guarded by Nunley. It's going to be over to Hardy, who just checked back into the ball game. He's going to get a screen from Hall. Mitten picks him up. Hall's wide open. They miss him, though. It's over in the hands of Bunch. They get it over to Spillman. Spillman's looking to drive now. He kicks it in the corner to Bunch. He fires up a three. It's short. It's blocked there by Mitten. Martin's got it. It's off to Mitten. Martin's got it. He's driving ahead. He's looking. Gets it off to Bradley underneath. He lays it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. Scotty take a 16 point lead at 29 to 13. That's his third assist on the a night. Three too. on the other end by Spillman's no good. Rebound goes to Martin for the Scotty. Martin's got it. He's going to drive down the lane now. He's going to go up the shot. It's no good, but he is fouled. That foul goes on Mason Bunch. That's his first team's fourth of the game. Second in the quarter. That's going to send Jarrett Martin to the SCRTC free throw line, where he's just going to shoot two. Trojans are having trouble staying in front of the Scotties. They're pushing the tempo, pushing the ball up the court. They can't get in front of them. Scotty's got a 16-point lead right now as Martin's looking to build on it here at the free throw line. Hey, bro. 
Martin's first free throw attempt is good. It's his first free yes. throw. He's one for three. Jeremiah Driver checks back in. He replaces Quinn Nunley. As the Trojans have only made one three-point basket in this game. As Martin's trying to give the Scotties an 18-point lead here. Martin's free throw attempt is good. Coach Buford's taking a timeout here. It's 31 to 13. We'll be back after a 30 second timeout on WCLU Sports. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. WCLU. We're back at Sky Gym. It's Chase Lander alongside Octavia Starr. We got an HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Martin pass out to Quinn Nunley for the three in the left corner. He knocks it down. It's a 31 to 13 lead for the Scotties here. Scotties in the second playing quarter. tough right now. Arguably playing one of their best games of the year as well. And the Trojans have also only made one three in the ball game. Yeah, Chase, they are one for seven from the three point line. That's that's unusual for the Trojans as they shoot around 35% on the year from the three ball as it's going to be Trojans basketball. It's Bewley, Hardy, Hall, Spillman, and also Carter Browning who just checked in the game for Trojans. As, as Bewley has it underneath, he gets it out to Browning. It's out to Bewley. It's inside to Hall. Hall's looking for Hardy. It's going to be out for a Browning three now. It's short. Rebound goes to Bradley. Goes guys. He's looking to push the pace. Behind the back dribble, he loses it but he gets it back, it's off to Martin, it's over to Walbert, he's gonna fire up a three now. It's no good, rebound to Jeremiah Driver, he goes back up and it's no good. Rebound's gonna be to Hall and they're gonna get a foul on Landon Mitten. That's gonna be his second, team's third of the quarter. JC had a wide open shot there, he just missed, just barely. As Clemens checks back in, he's gonna replace Browning. No he's not, Browning stays in the ball game. Spillman, Hardy, Hall, Clemens, Browning for the Trojans. As Spillman comes up into the front court guarded by Walbert. He's looking, he gets off the Hall. He's being guarded by Mitten. He goes to the rim, he's blocked by Martin. It's gonna be blocked by Mitten, he goes out of bounds off the Trojans. Nunley checks back in for the Scotties. He replaces Landon Mitten. Nice block here by Mitten. And it's Walbert with the ball, 235 left in the second quarter. It's a 31-13 lead for the Scotty. Walbert's got the circle. He gets it off to Nunley, and they're going to get a foul on Browning for the Trojans. That's his first team third of the quarter. It's going to be Scotty's ball underneath as Martin's going to throw it in. Martin gets it in to Nunley. Nunley has it in the corner. It's going to be back to Martin. 220 left in the second quarter as he gets it back to Bradley up top. He's being guarded by Hardy. It's going to be over to Walbert on the right side. Gets it inside to Martin now. Martin has it on the baseline. Martin's just going to bring it back out. He is being guarded here by Clinton. He's got a mismatch. He's going to try to take advantage and, of it. And it looks like the skies are going to go one four flat set here as well as Martin's just going to go to the rim. Oh, yeah. And he's going to lay it in. There's not many people that's going to stop that going down the lake. lane. It's a 20-point lead for the Scotties, 33-13 to 13 as Trojans have it in the front court. It's over to Browning. He fires up a three now. It's short. Long rebound goes to Browning. No. He drives down the lane. His shot is no good. Rebound goes to Walbert for the Scotties. He's looking to push the pace. He's quickly into the front court. He's going to go to the rim, and he's going to miss the shot, and they're going to get a no. guard. That's going to be his first. Team's fourth of the quarter. It's a 33-13 lead, though. 33-13 Thir lead for the Scotties, though. Hardy, Bewley, Spillman. Also Hall and Bunch for the Trojans. As Bewley brings it in the front court, he gets it off to Spillman at the elbow. Spillman's looking for a bunch. He's going to go down the lane now. He's going to be fouled by Nunley. 
That foul goes on Nunley. That is his second, team's fifth of the quarter. As it's going to be Tate Spillman to go to the SCRTC free climb where he's going to shoot two. As Spillman's free throw attempt is good. Spillman's second attempt now at the free throw line is short. Rebounds in the hands of Nunley. He's off to the races. Nunley's going to pick it up and he loses it, and they're going to call him for a travel. A little out of control there by Quinn. It's a 33-14 lead, though, for the Scotties. 117 left in the quarter. Scotty's playing tough right now. As it's into Bewley, 113 left in the quarter. It's over to Hardy. He gets it inside the hall, guarded by Jeremiah Driver. He puts it in the lane, and they're going to get him for a traveling violation now. It's a seventh turnover by the Trojans. It's going to be Cody Brewster to check in for the Scotties. He's going to give Walbert a breather. 106 left in the half. Scotty's up 19. It's going to be Martin to get it into Bradley. Bradley's played some really good minutes for the Scotties here in the first half. As he brings it up, up the floor, he's being guarded by Hardy. Just under a minute to go in the second quarter. Bradley's going to drive down the lane now. He's going to put up a long floater. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of none for the Trojans as Bewley's got it now. He's looking to drive down the lane. He's got it. He drives down the lane, and he's going to hit block. He's going to be blocked by Martin. Bradley has it. He goes to the other end. He's going to miss the layup. Rebound goes to Nunn for the Trojans. Nunn's looking for somebody to get it to. He can't get it to nobody. He gets it off to Hardy with 30 seconds to go. Hardy brings it up the sideline now. He's met. Bewley has it in the corner. It's going to be out to Hardy. Hardy thought about it. He's now going to pull up for a three. It's no good. Rebound goes to Jeremiah Driver for the Scotties, and they're going to get a foul on the Trojans. That foul goes on none. That's his first team's fourth of the quarter. It's going to be Walbert check in. He checks in for Brewster. 33-14 lead. 20 seconds left in the half. As the Skies are going to look for one shot here to try to get the lead over 20 at halftime. Trojans are getting some shots up. They're just not falling. And I think this play is probably going to go to Jack Martin or Walbert with 13 left on the clock. As Mark Walbert has it in the circle with 10. Now the offense is going to get going. Martin's got it. Walbert's looking. He gets it off to Martin with three. Martin has it with two. He gets it off to Walbert. Walbert's going to put up a shot there. It's the buzzer. It's no good. The Scotties, though, with probably their best first half of the year. They lead 33 to 14 at the half. We are going to take a five-minute break and come back with our Don Franklin Halftime Show on WCLU Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. 
Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651 We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candied bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Hardy's, goodness in the making. Glasgow Scotty's Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Go at him! Go at him! It's time for the Don Franklin Auto Halftime Report. We're back here at Scotty Gym. It's Chase Lindrum alongside Octavius Barber. We got the Don Franklin halftime show. The Scotty's lead 33 to 14 at halftime here. Mr. Barber will get us going here with our Garcia's Grill Sizzling Stats. Garcia's halftime sizzling stats. You got Glasgow Scotty's 33, Barron County 14. Let's go ahead and start with the, the Barron County Trojans. They were 4 of 22 from the two point. They were 1 for 10 from the three point line. They had nine rebounds. They had seven turnovers. Four for nine from the free throw line with a total of four fouls. For the uh, Glasgow Scotties, they were 13 of 21 from two, three of five from the three-point line, eight rebounds, three turnovers, four for seven from the free throw line with a total of 10 fouls. At halftime, you got your Glasgow Scotties 33, your Barron County Trojans 14. I'll go through the Barron County stats here. First, we're going to start with Bray Bewley. He is one of six from the field, one of two from three. He's two of two at the line. He's got two rebounds for five points. Tate Spillman is two of six from the free throw line. He is 0 of two from the field, 0 of one from three. He's only got two points at the half. Graham Hall is two of four from the field. He has four points at the half, one rebound. Mason Bunch is 0 of two from the three and did not score. Waylon Clemens is one of two from the, one of one from the field, three rebounds for two points. Also, Will William Compton was 0 of two from three and did not score. Cade Hardy was 0 of one from three and did not score. 
Jackson Reese was 0 of 1 from the field, 1 of 2 at the line for one point. And Carter Browning was 0 of 3 from the field, 0 of 2 from 3. One rebound, a team total of 14 in that first half. For your Scotties, it's J.C. Walver. He's 2 of 5 in the field, 0 of 2 from 3, 2 of 2 at the line, 3 rebounds for 6 points. Jarrett Martin is 4 of 4 from the field, 2 of 4 from the free throw line, 2 rebounds for 10 points. Jeremiah Driver is 1 of 2 from the field, 1 of 1 from 3, 2 rebounds for 3 points. JoJo Driver is 1 of 2 from the field, 1 rebound for 2 points. Quinn Nunley is 2 of 3 from the field, 1 of 1 from 3. He is got 1 rebound. Also... It's going to be Jalen Bradley, who played big minutes in that first half. Three of five in the field, one of one from the three. He's got seven points, a team total of 33 in that first half for the Scotties. This is their largest. Their largest lead of the game was at 33 to 13. It's 33 to 14 here at the half. We've got 238 left before the HVAC third quarter as the Scotties hope to keep the, the pedal on the gas. Yeah, they can't the uh, quarter here in a minute. Coming into this second half, they can't let up. You know, uh, Barron County shoots the three points good. And, you know, that's the best way to come back in a game like this. And, you know, you get this atmosphere going. You get the uh, Barron County Trojans fans going. They start making threes. They can jump back in this pretty quick. Yeah, you can't let your foot off the gas on this team because they can make five or six threes in a heartbeat, and they can be right back in this ball game. Uh, you can't let your foot off the gas. you got to keep guarding the three-point line. They're one of seven from the three-point line, I think you said, and what, four of 22 from the field? Yeah. That. I would say that is by far their worst shooting percentage on the year you know, they're, so they're, far. And they're not shooting uh, – they're not taking bad shots. You know, just we're just falling. contesting them. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's what I guess Coach Buford talked to them about, contest the three. They've missed at least three wide open threes. They're just not hitting shots. Well, and it's like that we've talked about before. This Scotty team, it's like Dr. Jacklin, Mr. Hyde. And they show up one night, then the next night, it, they're just, it's just not there. They are they have been a really good home team this year. They've got one win on the road. The rest of their wins have been coming at home. They've they're, been a completely different team at home this year. They they get behind uh, – these uh, Scotties fans get behind these Scotties, and they play great defense at home, and that's what it takes to win a championship. We're going to come back after a 30-second timeout. That's going to conclude our Don Franklin halftime show. We'll come back with the HVAC third quarter after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. If you already have internet through SCRTC, there's a pretty good chance your speed just went up, maybe even paying less. And if you don't, check on Fiber Optic with SCRTC in your area because 500 meg is now only 70 bucks. That's 500 down and upload. And if you want more speed, SCRTC got it. Up to 5 gig of it. Make the switch right now at SCRTC.com and we'll do the install free. This won't last forever. With unmatched customer support, SCRTC, your best and last internet provider. WCLU. We're back here at Sky Gym. Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barr. We got an HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Jarrett Martin layup down the lane here that gives the Scotties a 19 point advantage to begin the HVAC third quarter at 33 to 14. As both teams are in the huddle right now, and the clock's going to hit zero then halftime. It's going to be Martin, Mitten, JoJo Driver, Jeremiah Driver, and Walbert to begin this quarter. It's also going to be Scotty's basketball to open up this quarter as well as the Trojans are going to go with their same starters as they did in the game as well. Let's pick up right where we left off in the first half, you know, getting to the basket, hitting open jump shots, and playing great defense. It's going to be JoJo Driver to throw it in to begin this HVAC third quarter. It's off to Martin. Martin's being guarded here to begin this quarter by Waylon Clemens. It's back to JoJo Driver. Gets it off to Walbert. Walbert gets it to Jeremiah Driver. He goes down the lane. He lays up a shot that's good. That's a South Central Bank shot. It's a 35-14 game now. Everything the Scotties are wanting to do right now is going their way. As Buey picks up his dribble, he gets it off to Spillman. Back to Buey. He's being guarded by Walbert. It's in to the elbow to Hall. Back out to Bunch. Bunch gets it off to Buey. Buey drives down the baseline. Gets it off to Hall. Nice play there as Hall lays it up and in. Great pass there by Bray Buley. You see a cutting. That's a South Central Bank shot. 35 to 16 as Walbert has it for the Scotties. Walbert's going to drive down the lane now. He's met by Spillman. Off to Martin. Martin's going to go down the lane now. A fall away floater is no good. Rebound is 
fought for by Mitten. It's going to be a jump ball on the four between Mitten and Clemens. It's going to go to the Trojans. It's going to be Trojan basketball, 7.04 left in the HVAC third quarter. As the Scotties are going to bring a little full court pressure here because as it comes into Bewley. Bewley's being guarded by Walker. As the Scotties are staying a man to man. It's off to Spillman in the corner. He gets a screen from Bunch. Spillman's going to drive down the lane. He puts up a shot that's no good. Rebound is in the hands of Spillman. He goes back up with it, and he's fouled. That foul goes on JoJo Driver. That is now his third. Team's first of the quarter. That sends Tate Spillman to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. His free throw attempt is no good. Spillman only two of seven at the line so far tonight. And Spillman's second free throw attempt now is good. I got Spillman at three of eight on the night from the free throw line. It's a 35-17 Scotty lead. As Walbert has it in the front court, it's being guarded by Spillman. Walbert's going to drive down. He is going to be fouled by Spillman. It's going to be his first team, first of the quarter. Got to continue to attack the rim. They're, they're having trouble staying in front of us. As it's going to be Scotty's ball underneath. It's going to be Martin to throw it in. Nope, it's going to be Walbert. Walbert's going to throw it in. He gets it in the mid. It's going to be over to Jeremiah Driver. He thought about the three. He did not. It's off to Walbert. Now he will shoot it. It's no good. Rebound goes to Bewley for the Trojans. He's going to bring it in the front court now. He's going to drive down inside on JoJo Driver. He puts up a shot off the, off the backboard, and it's good. It's a South Central bank shot. Trojans trying to close in here. It's 35-19 as JoJo Driver's got it circle for the Scotties. As he picks up his dribble, he's looking to get somebody. He gets it off to Walbert. 6.09 left in this HVAC third quarter. Gets it over to JoJo Driver. He thought about the three. He now drives. He puts up a shot in the lane. It's good. It's a 37 to 19 Scotty lead now. They're up by 18, and Bewley has it. He's being guarded by Walbert. It's going to be over to Spillman. Spillman puts up a jump shot. That's good. Scotty don't need to let the foot off the pedal here. It's 37 to 21. Starting to make some shots. As it's a 1 2 2 press for Bear now that you don't see very often. As JoJo Driver has it, gets it off to Walbert. He, they're coming with a trap now. Walbert has it over to Jeremiah Driver. It's going to be back to Walbert. Over to JoJo Driver. Into Martin. Martin's got it in the lane. He gets it off to Mitten. Mitten loses the ball. It's in the hands of Bunch. It's over to Spillman. Spillman throws it ahead to Clemens. Clemens has it. Gets it into Hall. Hall has it in the lane. He kicks it out for a Bunch three. It's good. That's an Elmo Realty auction three-point shot. It's 37 to 24, and here come the Trojans. It's Mason Bunch's first three on the day. They lead by, Scotty's lead by 13, and Walbert has it in the front court. As it's got the Trojan fans on their feet over there, as Walbert has it in front of us, guarded by Spillman. Walbert's looking to get inside, gets it inside the driver. He's going to go and put the hit shot. It's no good, and there's going to be a charge call. Jeremiah trying to get to the rim. It's going to be County his does, second. Barron County does a great job of drawing charges. Nunley's going to check in the game. They're gonna, he's going to replace Mitten. We don't want to let this one slip away, Chase. The Trojans are slowly but surely coming back into this ball game. It's 37 to 24 as it comes into Bewey for the Trojans. 4.50 left in the HVAC third quarter. Bewey's looking. He picks up his dribble. He gets it into Hall just outside the three. It's back to Bewey. Bewey drives down the lane, stops his dribble. It's off to Hall. Hall's looking. He gets it back out to Spillman. Spillman has it up top. He gets it off to Clemens. Clemens thought about it. He does not shoot it. Clemens is now going to pull up from a 15-footer. It's no good. Rebound goes to Martin for the Scotty. Martin throws it ahead to Nunley. Nunley's got it. It's in the corner. Driver, he fires up a three now. It's good. That's an Elmer Realty in auction three-point shot. A big shot there by the Scotties. He gets them back up 40 to 24. As Bewey's got it, he gets it over to Spillman. Spillman doesn't shoot three. He drives down the lane. He pushes off. No call. It's off to Clemens. Clemens looking. Gets it off to Bunch. It's going to be a steal by Jeremiah Driver for the Scotties. As Driver's going to bring it up to court now. He's thinking about driving. He will drive down the lane now. He goes up with a shot that's no good. Rebound goes to Bunch for the Trojans. Just barely missed it. Bewey now has it. He's going to drive down the lane now. It's out to Clemens. Clemens drives baseline. He's cut off. It's out to Bewey. Bewey fires up a three in the left corner. It's no good. Rebound tips in the hands of Jarrett Martin. 
3.35 left in HVAC third quarter. Martin brings it to front court. Martin will now go down the baseline. He puts it up. His shot's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Hall for the Trojans. He hands it off to Bewley. He throws it ahead to Clemens, who's wide open. He's going to get an easy layup. He lays it in. That's a South Central bank shot. It's going to be a steal down low. That bucket is by Spillman. Here comes the Trojans. It's 40 to 28. The Scotty lead by 12. As Walbert has it, he's being guarded by Spillman. Trojan fans back on their feet. It's over to Jeremiah Driver now. It's back to Martin. Martin's got it at the top. He gets it off to JoJo Driver. He loses it, but gets it back. It's over to Nunley. It's over to Walbert. Walbert has it. He's being guarded by Spillman. He has it at the top of the key. It's over to Jeremiah Driver at the elbow. He's looking to get it off. He gets it off to Martin. 240 left in the HVAC third quarter. It's off to JoJo Driver. He's got it. He'll bring it back out. Now he drives down the lane, and he is going to be fouled. That foul goes on Bewley. That's his second, team second. Landon Minton checks back into the ballgame for his guys. He replaces Jeremiah Driver. It's Nunn and Compton. They replace Clemens and Hall for the Trojans. Getting too comfortable with the basketball. Had three straight turnovers right there. As Walbert gets it into Minton, over to Nunley. Nunley looking, gets it off to Walbert. It's going to be a steal for the Trojans. Oh, walbert has got it on the floor. It's back to Nunley. Nunley's going to cross the timeline with it. Over to Martin. Martin's thinking differently. It's in the corner of JoJo Driver. He fires up a three now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Spillman for the Trojans. Trojans have a chance to cut it inside 10 now in this possession. It's over to Buey. Buey's going to drive down inside now. He kicks out to Compton. He's wide open for a three. Uh-oh. It's good. That's an Elmore Realty auction three-point shot. It's a 40-31 game. And Coach Buford says, seen enough. Scotty's take a timeout. We'll be back at the 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. Sports. Have you, have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. You. We're back here in Scotty Jim. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. We've got an HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the William Compton three that gets the Trojans back in single digits at 40 to 31. As Coach Buford takes a full time out there to calm his team down, I believe. They had their biggest lead at 35 to 14. It is a 17 to 5 run after that. It's all it's going to take is hitting a couple jump shots and momentum starting to swing and Barron County's crowd is getting into it. We got to settle down here, get some screen and roll action, get Jarek or JC to the to the to the basket. It's 2:05 left in the HVAC third quarter. Scotty's lead 40 to 31 as the ball is going to come into Walbert. He's being guarded by Spillman. Man-to-man -man defense for the Trojans. He gets a screen from Mitten. Walbert drives down the lane, pulls up from the elbow. His shot's short. Rebound goes to Spillman for the Trojans. Spillman's got it. He goes down the lane now. He's going to put up a shot that in and out. Rebound goes to Mitten for the Scotty. And they're going to get a jump ball. It looked like Spillman had a, a grab of the arm there. A Mitten, no call, but it goes to the Scotties either way. As Bradley checks in for the guys, he replaces JoJo Driver. Jalen's had a, a, a good game. Let's let's see if he can continue on with that. 145 left in HVAC third quarter. As Walbert brings it to the front court, he's going to get a screen from Mitten Hall. Comes up to it. Walbert's got it at the elbow. It's off to Martin. Martin goes down the lane. He loses it, but he is fouled. That foul goes on Mason Bunch. That's his second team's third of the quarter. It's going to be Martin. Martin gets it into Nunley. It's out to Bradley up top. Bradley's looking. Bradley's going to get it back to Walbert. They're going to set the offense up at 120 left in this HVAC third quarter. Walbert has it at the elbow. He gets it off to Martin. Martin's going to drive down the lane now. Spin move. He's going to put up a floater, but he, he's going to put up a turnaround jump shot. He is fouled. Foul goes on Bunch. That's now his third team fourth. He's going to send Jarrett Martin to the SCRTC free throw line. He's going to shoot two.
Martin's first free throw attempt is short. It's going to be Clemens to check back in for the Trojans. He replaces Bunch. Jay shooting two for five from the free throw line. <coughs> this is a big free throw right here to get it back into double digits. This needs to go down for the Scotties because Martin's free throw attempt is no good. Rebound goes to Clemens for the Trojans. Martin, two of six at the line. And Buley races in the front court. Nobody picking up. He gets picked up by Nunley. He throws up a long floater. It's no good. Rebound to Martin. He's got Mark Walbert ahead. He gets it to him. He's going to lay it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. Nice look there by Jarrett Martin to get it to Walbert. Lead back to 11, 42 to 31. As Spillman has it in the circle. Under a minute to go in the HVAC third quarter. He gets it off to Buley. He's being guarded by Bradley. He's going to get a screen from Hall. Buley's going to drive down the lane, kicks it out to Spillman. Spillman Whoa. couldn't get the shot up. He brings it back out. He picks up his dribble. He's looking to get it off to Buley. He can't get it to him. He's going to get off to Hall, back to Spillman. 30 seconds left in the HVAC third quarter. As Spillman's looking to drive, and they're going to get a foul here on Walbert. That is the third team foul of the quarter. As it's going to be Trojan basketball, it's in the hall. 26 seconds left, gives it back to Buey. He's being guarded by Bradley. He picks up his dribble. It's in the corner to Spillman, guarded by Walbert. It's going to be at the elbow to Hall. Hall's going to bring it back out and get to Buey. Buey gets a screen from Hall. Buey drives down the lane, picks up his dribble. He's looking for somebody to get to. Now he's going to pull up for a jump shot because Scotty players left him. It's good. Left him open right there. Five seconds left is Bradley. He brings it to front court. He's going to go to the rim now. He's going to pull up in the lane. His shot's blocked, but out of bounds. That's going to end the third quarter. It's going to end the HVAC third quarter. Scotty's lead 42-33. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout after on WCU Sports. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. WCLU. We're back here in Scotty Jim. Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. Scotty's lead by nine at 42 to 33 after three quarters of play. We've got the Walbert trucking fourth quarter. Scotty's biggest lead of the night is 35 to 14. As at, after the first quarter at Allen County, it's Allen County lead Warren East 15 to 11. A little surprised little surprising. by that score, yeah. As now the Trojans will open up this. We'll have to settle down right here and Trojans, play some basketball. Trojans open the ball up with this fourth quarter with the ball. The nine-point lead for the Scotties. It's going to come into Buley. we got the Walbert trucking fourth quarter here in Scotty Jim. And Buley's got it. He's going to get a screen from Hall. Buley's got it. He gets off the Hall up top. Back to Spillman. Spillman gets a screen. Spillman has it. He steps back behind the three-point line. It's over to Clemens. Clemens looking for Hall. He does not get it to him. Hall drives baseline. Goes with a shot. It's no good, but he is fouled by Jeremiah Driver. The foul goes on Jeremiah Driver. That's his third team first of the quarter. That sends Waylon Clemens to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. He's only a 53% free throw shooter. On so he makes year. one of out of every two. Clemens is now at the line for two. His first attempt is no good. Driver checks back in for the Skies. He replaces Bradley as Compton comes out for the Trojans as well. It's going to be meant to check back in for the Skies. He replaces Jeremiah Driver. He picked up his third foul right there as well. I heard Coach Buford say, you're going to give him a break, you're going to give it to him now because he's probably going to play the rest of the game. That's probably correct. As Clemens' second free throw attempt now is no good as well. Rebound goes to Martin. Martin quickly gets it. He's going to the other end with it. Martin gets it in the corner to Walbert. Gets a screen from Martin now. Walbert's going to pull up for a three now. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Clemens. Clemens is off to the races. Kicks it ahead to Spillman. Spillman quickly for a three. It's short. And it's going to go over the backboard, out of bounds. Scotty's catch a break there by Spillman's three not going down. As Compton checks back in for the Trojans, he replaces Clemens. we got to know where Compton's at. He's, he's a good shooter. He's a good if he's got, if he gets set, he's wide open. He's most likely going to knock it down. 
as Walbert's got it for the Scotty. 42 33, 720 left in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter. As Walbert gets it off to Martin. Martin's got it up top. It's off to JoJo Driver. He goes down the lane. He's going to put up a shot to block. It's in the hands of Mason Mason. Mitten gets it back. He goes up with it. It's no good, but he's fouled. Nice heads up play by Landon Mitten. That foul goes on Mason Bunch. That's his fourth. Team's first of the quarter. Sends Landon Mitten to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. Looking for his first points of the night as well. Mitten's free throw attempt is good. It's going to be Kate Hardy checked back in for the Trojans. He's going to replace Mason Bunch, who picked up four fouls. Mitten's got one more here to give the Scotties an 11-point lead. Mitten's second free throw attempt is no good. Rebound goes to Compton. It's a 43-33 game as Hardy brings it to the front court for the Trojans. He's being guarded by Nunley. Hardy's looking. He gets it off to Spillman in the right corner. He gets a screen from Hall. Spillman's open, but he does not take the three. He picks up his dribble, gets it back to Buley. Buley's being guarded by Walbert. Buley gets it off to Hardy. He gets a screen. He's going to get a screen from Coffin, but doesn't take it. Hardy now drives down the lane. He goes up with a running floater. It's no good. Rebound's going to be tipped in the hands of Walbert. Walbert's looking to run with it. Walbert's going to lose it in the hands of Buley. It's a two-on-two -two break. Buley has it. Buley's going to drive baseline. Cut off by Martin. It's up to Spillman. He's wide open for a three. It's no good. Rebound goes to Walbert. Walbert is going to go the other end. He's going to be fouled by Spillman. Got lucky there again, Chase. Tate Spillman was wide open. The foul goes on Tate Spillman. That's his second, team's second of the quarter. They knock those down when we play them at Barron County. Ooh, it's a 43-33 lead for the Scotties. As it is going to be Martin or Walbert throw it in for Scotties. He gets it in the mitten over to Nunley. Nunley's looking to get to Walbert. Walbert goes down the lane. He puts up a running floater. It's in and out. Rebound goes to Hardy for the Trojans. He brings it up the court for the Trojans as well. At six minutes left in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter, Hardy gets it over to Buley. He's going to fire up a long three-pointer. It's no good. Rebound goes to Mitten. It's off to Walbert. Walbert's bringing it up the court for the Scotties. He's going to drive down the lane now. He's going to put it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. It's a 12-point lead for the Scotties. It's 45-33. to It's off to Hardy. He's being guarded by Martin. Get the screen from Compton. Compton is going to be left open. He does not put up three. He drives. He's met by Martin, and they're going to get a foul on the Scotties. That's going to go on Jarrett Martin. That's his second, and I thought it was more of a jump ball than a foul. Yeah. As Clemens checks into the game for the Trojans, and Bradley checks in to replace Walbert. As, as Buey's looking to get it in for the Trojans. He's looking. He can't get in. He gets it into Clemens. He goes down the lane. It's blocked out of bounds. But there's a foul. They got Nunley for the foul there. It's his third. I don't know about that one, Chase. That was. Clemens is at the line for two. It's SCRTC free throw line. He did just miss two free throws, though. He's a 53% shooter on the year. Clemens' first attempt is no good. good. Announcer's curse continues. It's 0 for 3 on the night. It is. He's 0 at 3 on the night. His second attempt now is no good as well. Rebound goes to Martin for the Scotties. He's looking to push the pace. Martin's got it in the front court now. He gets it off to Nunley. Nunley's looking. He's going to have it at three-point line. Back out to Bradley. 5.30 left in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter. Bradley's being guarded by Compton. Bradley is going to hand off the driver. Driver has it in the lane. He thinks different. Gets it out to Martin. Martin's going to bring it back out top to the Scotties. He gets it. No, he thought about giving it to JoJo Driver, but he, or Bradley he doesn't. It's in the hands of Nunley. He gets it off to JoJo Driver. He's got it. He's going to drive down inside. Spin move in the lane. Goes up in the lane. It's good and one. That foul goes on Bray Buley. That's his third, team third of the quarter. Scotty's got a 14-point lead. JoJo Driver goes to the free throw line for one. What a move by JoJo Driver. He spins in the lane and puts up a nice floater. As Walbert checks back in the game, he gives Jarrett Martin a quick breather. As the Scotties have a 14-point lead, looking to make it 15 here at the line. He said jo uh, uh, Jet checked out. Jet's has seven rebounds on the night. As JoJo Driver's free throw is good, Mason Bunch checks back in for the Trojans. He replaces Graham Hall. JoJo Driver now has 10 points on the night. Eight in the half. It's a 15-point Scotty lead. As Buey has it in the front court, he gets off to Spillman in the corner. It's back out to Compton. It's over to Clemens now, being guarded by Walbert. 
Clemens is going to drive down the lane. He's cut off by Walbert and Mitten. Clemens has it out the front. Bunch is looking for Spillman, gets it to him in the lane. Spillman's going to go up with a shot. It's no good, but there's a foul. Foul goes on Bradley. It's going to be his second team, fourth of the quarter. Next foul puts the Trojans in a double bonus the rest of the game. It's Tate Spillman to go SCRTC free time where he's going to shoot two. Spillman's first two. attempt is no good. Yeah, two for nine. Two for nine now at the free throw line. They have not scored in this quarter well. They are 0 of 5 from the free throw line. Tate Spillman is normally a 76% free throw shooter. His second attempt is no good as well. Rebound goes to Nunley for his guys. He is 2 of 10 on the night from the free throw line. It's a 15 point lead for the guys. 440 left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. As Bradley drives down the lane, his shot is blocked there by Bunch. It's in the hands of Clemens. He quickly is going the other way. It's going to be tapped out of bounds, though, by the Scotties. Good play there by Bradley. It's going to be Martin to check back in for the Scotties. He's going to replace Landon Mitten. It's going to be Trojan's ball underneath. It's going to be Compton to throw it in. Compton's going to throw it in for the Trojans. He's looking to get it in. He gets it into Bewley up top. Bewley has He drives down the baseline, puts up a floater off the board. It's no good. Rebound goes to Jarrett Martin from the Scotties. He gets it off to Walbert. Walbert's looking to run. Walbert will. He will drive down the lane now. Spin move in the lane. He goes up with the shot. It's no good. Rebound goes to Bunch. Scotty's in a little too big of a hurry right here. As Bunch tries to get it to Bewley, he does. Bewley brings it across timeline back to Bunch. Bunch is open for a three now. It's good. That's an Elmore Realty and auction three-point shot. Coach Warren Cunningham takes a timeout. It's 48-36. to 36. We will come back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. WCLU. We're back at Scotty Jim. It's Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. We got an HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the JoJo driver spin move, floater in the lane. He was fouled on the play. It's a 48 36 lead for the Scotty. With just over four minutes left in this Walbert trucking fourth quarter. Barron County's made a run a couple times, and we've responded both of them times that they've made a run. One of the first times when the Scotties normally have got down this year, they've not responded very good to the adversity, but tonight they have. Yeah, that's, that's a good sign for us with the district tournament coming up. As the Trojans will bring a little full court pressure with four minutes to go in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter. As it's Walbert in the front court guarded by Spillman. They lead by 12 with just under four minutes to go. Walbert's going to drive down the lane. He's going to put up a floater. It's no good, but he is fouled. That's going to go on Spillman. It's going to be his third, team fourth. It's going to send Walbert to the SCRTC free line where he's going to shoot two. Walbert's first attempt is good. As Jeremiah Driver checks back into the game for the Scotties, he's going to replace Jalen Bradley. JC's three for four on the night, one pending. Walbert's trying to give the Scotties a 14-point lead, but 3.54 to go. His second attempt is good. It's a 50-36 ball game as Bewley has it in the front court for the Trojans. He's going to get it off to Bunch. Bunch is being guarded by Nunley. It's off to Spillman up top. He gets it off to Bunch. Bunch fires a three. It's going to be short. Rebound's going to go out of bounds off the Trojans. He fired it as soon as he touched it. The Trojans it. have not been able to get three many. They're getting some three-point attempts off, but they're not making very many tonight as the ball comes in to Walbert for the Scotty. It's a trap pressure here for the Trojans as JoJo Driver gets trapped. It's over to Walbert now in the middle. It's going to be over to Nunley in the middle to Martin. Martin gets it out to JoJo Driver. He fires up a three now. It's in and out. Rebound goes to Martin. Back to Walbert. Walbert's wide open. He pulls up for a three. It's good. Danelle Morility in auction. Three-point shot. Scotty's lead 53 to 36, 315 left in the ball game. And the Scotty's now bring pressure. It's off to Spillman in the front court. He's trapped. He picks up his dribble out to Bunch. Bunch is picked up by Nunley. 
Bunch is looking to drive on him, and he can't get around him. Bunch picks up his dribble. It's going to be a steal from Scott. He's in the hand of Walbert. Walbert got it. He's going to cross over in the middle of the lane. Gets it off to Jojo Driver. Off to Nunley. Missed the shot. Rebound goes to the Trojans. Bunch is off to the races. It's going to be a tip there by Jojo Driver. He gets it, and it's at the hands of Walbert. 250 left in the Walbert truck in fourth quarter. Crazy sequence there. Barron County up to 11 turnovers. Scotty's lead by 17, 53 to 36 as Walbert has it. He gets a screen from Driver. Walbert picks up his drill. Off to Martin. Martin's going to go to the rim. He puts it up and in and the foul. Scotty's have responded well to this adversity tonight. That is. Jack Martin is up to a double-double. That is going to be Bunch's fifth foul for the Trojans as well. And the Scotties look to take a 20-point lead as some of the Barron County fans start to leave the gym. Bunch fouls out on the night. He had six points on the night. Uh, Bunch has six points on the night on two of five shooting all three-point attempts as Clemens comes in the game for him. Martin's at the line, SCRTC free throw line. He's going to shoot one. Martin on the night has 10 rebounds. Martin's free throw attempt bounces around and in. Gives the Scotties a 20 point lead at 56 to 36. As Bewley comes into the front court for the Trojans, guarded by Walbert. Bewley picks up his dribble. It's in the corner. Spillman. Spillman pump fakes. He drives down the lane. And he is going to be fouled. That foul goes on JoJo Driver. That's his fourth. Team fourth of the quarter. 2.22 left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. That's their team's fifth foul. So it's going to send the Trojans to the free throw line. It's going to be Tate Spillman. He is only 2 of 10 on the night. Normally a 76% free throw shooter as well. Spillman's first attempt is good. It's a 56-37 game. As Spillman's got one more at the line. His second attempt is good. Four for 12 on the night. Woo. It's in the corner to Nunley. He's going to fire up a three now. No good. Rebound goes to Jeremiah Driver for Scotty. He has it. He's in the got lane. Backs down Graham Hall. Goes up the shot. It's blocked by Hall. It's in the hands of Clemens. Two minutes left in the ball game as Clemens quickly brings it into the front court. He gets it out to Buey. He's going to fire up a long three now. That's good. That's an Elmore Realty and auction three-point shot. Coach Warren Cunningham's going to take a timeout with 157 left on the clock. It's a 15-point lead. Lead for the Scotties. If he will take a quick 30-second timeout, we'll just stay right here for it. Scotty leads 56 to 41. Off of Jarrett Martin's double-double on the night so far. He's got 13 points and has 10 rebounds on the night so yeah, far. Great night for Jarrett Martin, but if you look at the scoring right here, it's been pretty much spread out tonight. It really has. I mean, <laughs> Walbert's got 6, 8, 10, 13. Walbert leads them with 15 points, but other than that, other than him and Jarrett Martin, it's been pretty spread out. As it's going to be Scotty basketball in the backcourt as there's 157 left, a 15-point Scotty lead. Scotty's also trying to break, as we talked about, I'm not trying to jinx it, this 10-game losing streak to the Trojans. 25 of the last 31 as it comes into Walbert off to Nunley as the Trojans bring a little pressure. Nunley's going to get trapped. It's back to Walbert. Walbert crossed the timeline. He's trapped. They're going to get him uh, for a travel. He did. Sorry, let's go. you got to play defense. got to play defense. Get them stopped. Get a couple stops. Make sure they don't get up some threes here. It's going to be into Bewley. Bewley's quickly into the front court for the Trojans. He's going to go down the lane now. He's cut off. It's going to be in the corner to Compton. Compton brings it back out to Clemens. Clemson's going to drive down the lane, back out to Compton. He fires up a three now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Bewley. Bewley has it inside. He takes it all the way across. He puts up a 13-footer. It's no good. Rebound to Jeremiah Driver for the Scotties. And it's going to be – he's on the floor with it. He gets it to Nunley, though. Nunley's got to quickly get it across for no 10 seconds. Gets it across to JoJo Driver, and he's just going to hold the ball with 120 left. It's off in the hands of Walbert. He's being guarded by Spillman. He brings it back out top. Scott, he just need to be smart with the ball. No get out with a victory. It's in a JoJo driver. Back to Jeremiah driver, and he is going to be fouled. That foul goes on Waylon Clemens. That's his first. 
That's going to send Jeremiah Driver to the SCRTC free climb where he's going to shoot too. Scotty's finding open players. You know, they're, they're finding more open players. Good passing by the Scotties. I think this is about going to do it for the Scotties here. His driver's free throw attempt is short. As it's going to be Hardy, Jackson Reese, Gavin Nunn. Also going to be Carter Browning. And the Trojans have thrown in the towel right here, I believe. Also, Cash Moore checks into the ball game for the Trojans. As Jeremiah Driver's got one more here at the SCRTC free throw line. His second attempt is no good. Rebound goes to none for the Trojans. It's off to Hardy with a minute to go in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. Hardy's got it. He's going to drive down inside. He's cut off. It's outside to Browning. He fires up a three. That's no good. Rebound goes to Nunley for the Scotties. He's going to throw it ahead to Martin. Martin's going to go to the rim and throw it down. Scotties lead 58-41 on the cusp of taking down the Trojans to give them the first district loss for the season as it's going to be blocked there. Reese with the shot. It's no good out to Browning. Browning drives inside. His shot is no good. Rebound it is tapped around. It's in the hands of Driver on the floor, and they're going to get a foul here on the Trojans. As the Scotty fans are up on their feet behind us, that foul goes on. Kate Hardy, that's his third. Great defense there by the Scotties. Q with the big block. As the Scotties here are going to sub in five new players after the free throw attempt here. It's going to be Jeremiah Driver to go to the SCRTC free throw line. He's going to shoot two. After this timeout, or after this free throw here, it's going to be Garmin Bradley. Jeremiah Moore, it's going to be Grayson Bartley. It's going to be Kobe Brewster to check in. Jeremiah Driver, 0 for 3 on the day, on the day for, three, for the free throw As the starters line. check out for the Scotties here, JoJo Driver, Clint Nunley, Walbert. Great win by the Scotties. This is going to be a great win by the Scotties here. They're going to defeat the, this Trojan team by double digits. As we've talked about, this Scotty team at home has been really good this year. As Driver's second attempt bounces around and out. Rebound goes in the hands of Carter Browning. He throws it ahead to Reese. He fires up a three now. It's going to be short. Rebound goes to Browning. He goes back with it. No good. Off to none. It's going to be out of bounds. Off of the Scotties. As it's Moore that checks in for the Scotties, he replaces Jeremiah Driver. 25 seconds left to go in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. As Hardy's looking to get it in. He gets it in inside, but it's going to be a scrum on the floor. It's going to be a jump ball between Brewster and none. It's going to go to the Scotties. An impressive performance by the Scotties tonight, must say. All around impressive uh, win by the by the Scotties. As Bradley is going to bring it in the front court. Bradley's going to get over to Bartley. Bartley's going to get off to Garmin. Garmin's going to fire up a three now. Back to the red and out. Rebound goes to Browning for the Trojans. It went all the way in and With out. With four seconds to go, Scotty's going to win this ball game to break the streak as Reese goes to the rim, and it's going to be off the none. He lays it up and in. It doesn't matter. The Scotty's come out victorious. They break this nine-game winning streak of the Trojan in this series, 58 to 43. That takes the Scotty to six and ten on the year, two and three in the district. Barron gets their first loss in the district. They're 13 and five on the year, four and one in the district. We'll be back after a seven-minute timeout. On WCOU Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. They're coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm gonna own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. 
Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow. 651 We're not superheroes. But when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen. But we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand anytime with a same day service guarantee now that's a big promise and that's probably why no one else does it so when dealing with your heating and cooling call hvac services and you'll have the right team by your side when you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. Want to slash your cable bill? Save over $20 a month with MyStream TV from SCRTC, the savings alternative with the same great channel lineup you've always been accustomed to. Packages as low as $85 even include Internet, at least 200 meg. This is a no-brainer. No more cable boxes, just an app. And you even get an extra stream. Wait till we show you catch-up TV. Compare your current service to the new MyStream TV from SCRTC, 678-2111. Call and save today. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. They're coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. 
Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candy bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Hardy's goodness in the making. Glasgow Scottish Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau Agent Joe Myers. Now, the Don Franklin Auto post-game wrap-up. It's Chase Landrum alongside Coach Buford now. It's a 58 to 43 win. That snaps the 10 game winning streak for the Trojans <laughs> in this series. 26, I believe it was, of the last 31 snaps that streak. Coach, it was all from the beginning of this game. From the opening tip, it just looked like the boys out there were just ready to play tonight. The intensity level was brought. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, the biggest thing, I think, like, it was a full team effort. It wasn't. It wasn't just one person. Um, we were they were all locked in from start to finish. I think um, I think Warren East helped us a lot. Uh, we played well against Warren East, and we were right there. I, like I told him in practice all night, like y'all just got to understand, we need to play with some some urgency, a sense of urgency. And then at the end of the day, it's all about them manning up to a certain extent. Like they have to understand, like when things go bad or something goes wrong, like you just can't. Like, little kids do that stuff, whining and stuff. And I, I told them in practice, like, we got to get over those plays. We haven't gotten the best of the top end of all the calls lately. So, at the end of the day, we just got to play through it and play hard. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, and I'm looking at three bright spots on the night. Jarrett Martin, he had a double-double, 15 points and 10 rebounds. Also, J.C. Walbert, once again, them two combined for 30 points in this ball game. A big lift, but. I'm going to go back to the first half. Big moments. Jalen Bradley. Yes. Off the bench. Seven first half, big first half points when you needed him the most. For sure. He provided it. I mean, he, we, we talked to him and told him, hey, you got to step up. You know, I know you, you quit sitting back and looking for waiting for somebody else to, to do something. Um, go. Your time is now. You're going to get the minutes. You're going to get the time to be able to shine and, and, play, and play at a high level, which we know he's capable of doing and also making big shots. So, you just got to go out there and do it. Yeah, and y'all, I mean, shot the three ball good, y'all. And for them to only make five of 23, I believe it is, from three. I think we was – the I five that they hit, we lost them. I think we lost them. Yeah. Uh, I think we were very, very intentional in finding the shooters. Um, I watched the film uh, from there, and we just wasn't putting our hands up, and so I, we stressed that. You know, but you know what? I, I can't go – Man, Jay Driver and Landon, mm -hmm. man, the big boy uh, Hall. He's a good, he's a good post player. He posts strong. They played their butt off. So when mm -hmm. we had somebody, we had somebody there for help. You know what I mean? And that was huge. Like we played great team defense. We got, we really, really got after it tonight. I agree, Coach Buford. That is a good win for us tonight. We will probably – we could see them again in the district if we yeah. get by Warren East in the first round. We will see you all at Caverna on Tuesday night. That's a big game over there as well. Caverna's got a really good team over there Yeah, that's going to be a well. war. It's, a, it's, a, it's, not just, it's not just a game. It's kind of like this. It's a, it's a rivalry. You know what I mean? We got to go to their place. The gym's small. It's going to be packed, especially with the way they've been playing. And then hopefully we, our confidence is just going to keep growing. So uh, we'll be ready to go. We'll be ready to go come Tuesday. Thanks for coming out, Coach Buford. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's Coach Buford after a 58-43 victory on the evening. That takes the Scotties a 6-10 on the year, 2-3 in the district. The Trojans fall to 13-5, 4-1 in the district. We've got Mr. Octavius Barber back now. We're going to go ahead and go ahead and go through the Garcia's Grill Sizzling Stats on our Don Franklin Auto post-game wrap-up. We're going to let Octavius go ahead and take it away. Okay, our, um, as you see, the Glasgow Scotties defeated the Barron County Trojans 58-43. to They The Barron County shot 13 for 51 from two. They shot five for 23 from three. They had 22 rebounds, 11 turnovers. They, had, they were six for 20 from the free throw line, and they had 14 fouls. On your Glasgow Scotty side, they scored 58 points, 22 for 47 
for 46 percent. They had three. They had five for 13 for 38 percent. They had five turnovers. They were nine for 20 from the free throw line and had 17 total fouls. Again, your final score was the Glasgow Scotties 58, the Barron County Trojans 43. Got the individual stats here. We're going to first start with the Trojans. We're going to start with Bray Buey. He had 12 points on the night. He was four of 13 from the field, two of four from the field. He was two of two of the line, four rebounds for 12 points. Also with nine points is Tate Spillman. He was two of nine from the field, 0 of three from three. He was only four of 12 at the free throw line, three, up, three rebounds, one offensive for nine points. Graham Hall was three of five in the field, all for two-point range, one rebound for six points. Mason Bunch was two of five in the field, all three-point attempts for six points, and he had two rebounds. Waylon Cummins was one of four from the field, 0 of four from three, six rebounds, one offensive board for four points. William Compton was one of four from the field, all three-point attempts, one rebound for three points. Kate Hardy was 0 of two from three, 0 of three from the field, one rebound, did not score in the ball game. Jackson Reese was 0 of 3 from the field, 0 of 1 from 3, 1 of 2 at the line for 1 point. Gavin Nunn was 1 of 1 from the field, 2 rebounds for 2 points. Carter Browning was 0 of 4 from the field, 0 of 3 from 3, 0 of 1 from inside the line, 2 offensive rebounds for 0 points, a team total of 43. Now for our Scotties, we're going to start with J.C. Walbert. He was 4 of 14 from the field, 1 of 5 from 3, 4 of 5 from the free throw line, 3 rebounds for 15 points. Jarek Martin, 7 of 7 from the field, 3 of 7 from the free throw line, 10 big rebounds for 15 points and 10 rebounds, a double-double on the night. Jeremiah Driver was 2 of 6 from the field, 1 of 1 from 3, 0 of 4 from the free throw line, 5 rebounds, 2 offensive boards for 5 points. JoJo Driver was 4 of 8 from the field, 1 of 3 from 3, 1 of 1 from the free throw line, 1 rebound for 10 points. Quinn Nunley had 5 points on 2 of 4 shooting, 1 of 2 from 3, 0 of 1 from the free throw line, excuse me there, and four rebounds for a total of five points. Landon Minton did not take a shot from the field, but was one of two from the field with three, or one of two from the free throw line, three rebounds, one offensive board for one point. And Jalen Bradley was three of seven from the field, one of one from three for seven points, a team total of 58 on night. Scotty's win, 58 to 43 in this ball game. We will come back after a one-minute timeout. We will give you the hearty, hot, and fresh play of the game. We will give you our players from the game from the girls' side and on the boys' side. We'll be back after a one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going on a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. Ready? WCLU. We're back in Scotty Gym. Chase Landrum alongside Octavius Barber. Our girls play. We're going to do the Hardys. I know we'll do the what girls player of the game first. We're going to go with Addie Slagle tonight. She was 4 of 11 from the field, 1 of 5 from the three point line for 9 points. She also was 0 of 2 from the free throw line, 1 rebound. The Lady Scotties lose 51 to 23 here tonight. Now for the boys, we're going to go. With our Hardy's hot, Hardy's hot and fresh play of the game, it's going to be this JoJo driver driving, spin move in the lane. He was fouled, and the bucket went in. JoJo's also going to be our player of the game tonight. He hit 10 points on four of eight shooting, one of three from three, one of one at the line, one rebound for 10 points on the night. A good victory for the Scotties tonight, Octavius. Hard-fought hard uh, victory for the Scotties tonight. What, uh, just an all-around great game for them. Yep. We got a girls game on Monday. They play South Warren. It's a JV varsity doubleheader at home against South Warren. JV will begin at 6 o'clock. 
the varsity game will follow probably around 7.15, so we'll probably have pregame for that, probably around 7.05, 7.10, kind of in that area. The next boy-girl doubleheader is going to be Tuesday night at Caverna. Big matchup over there. It always is over in the cave as Lady Skies and Skies will take on the Colonels in the gym. That game will begin at 5.30 at Caverna, not 6. 5.30 at Caverna on Tuesday night. We will be back in action with the girls in Scotty Gym on Monday night. We will see you on Monday night. This has been Glasgow Scotty's Basketball on WCLU 103.1 FM and AM 1490. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Your home for Glasgow High School Scotty Sports. WCLU.